Boom. Awesome, awesome. I'm like pondering through. What did I forget this time? Everything. <laughs> Michael's pictures, ads, giveaways. What's up, Patrick? Patrick in here, sound check, sound check. Yeah, your your sound is on. I, I had to turn it off. Yeah, well, I know you don't want to listen to me. I mean, who, who does? Well, no, it would get... It would, it would I'm, kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I don't want to listen to two of you, okay? Yes. <laughs> One's enough. Oh. Yeah, you ain't kidding. I got a good funny story from last night, though. With, with Steve, Steve was here, uh, up the bill. It was hysterical. Oh. Mr. Happy, number two. Who's number one, Mr. Happy? Oh, the other bill. Oh, the other bill. Original Mr. Happy. Yeah. Steve Chenault? No, no, my buddy uh, Steve. Uh, Steve, my he, buddy. He's our, he's our non-gaming buddy. Yes, because he's too cool for it. Whoops. See, look, there's wrong button number one of the night. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, so uh, he comes over, you know, it's, it's him and Lisa, and then we had uh, my, my wife's friend Sue uh, and her daughter. Her daughter is 17, and she's like a... Um, Hey, hey, Scott, she is a uh, lover. She loves Stranger Things. In fact, when the she, she woke up at like, what, four in the morning to, when it came live to watch the final episodes or whatever. Hey, Justinius. Yeah. So, uh, but Tommy came over with three of his friends and uh, all the friends are all like, oh my God, we want to we play D&D, &D, can you teach us? So I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a game with, Tommy's not gonna play, but the three friends are and, uh, and Sue's daughter, Samantha. So I'll have like a, an introductory game That'd be pretty cool. They're That's all like cool. yeah, seniors in high school. Yeah. All the noobs. Yeah, and they've never played before, so. Wahahaha. What, and they learned about D and D through uh, Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah, that's it. They don't know about they don't know about play yeah, you know, they've never played, so they get, I can introduce them to my old school style right off the bat. I read somewhere that that show uh, increased Google search for D&D &D by 600%. Yeah. That's insane. Oh, I could believe that. Oh, look at that, Christine. That's awesome. Hey. There's a dwarf on the screen. Dwarves and not, only dwarves. Not Christine yet. But, uh, oh, hey, what's up, man? There's the guy. <laughs> fraud. The tech guy. Yeah. Yeah. So... I don't. Yeah, I don't know if you all have a, a, a an easy way to switch between the, her picture and that, but um, or uh, or one or the well, other. It's fine. Be able to just turn around and look at the camera. That's awesome. That's, the best That's we're going to be able to do there. I think that is perfect, though. My goodness, you're so handsome. I know. Right? <laughs> they got my cute kitty ears, right? Christie's headset. So that's what Kyle looks like. So handsome. We thought he was just a disembodied voice. I am. I am, in fact, just a disembodied voice. What you're looking at is a computer project, and Christy sculpted me. <laughs> I, I think she's good to go. It's up, I'll go check on her. How much yeah. longer until y'all start? Uh, you got nine minutes. Okay, cool. Hey, Taryn. Tea time with Taryn. What's up, boo? Bum 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 bum. Yes, you've got a bum bum. Bum 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 bum. Uh, see, Mike, you broke my concentration. I forgot which. I forgot which <laughs> button to hit now. <laughs> Wrong button already. Wrong button. Oh, excuse me. I'm so gassy. Nice. What's up, Caesar? We've been watching the Umbrella Academy. Yeah, I heard that's good. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. 
My wife just watched it. She watches that while I paint. Oh, there you go. Notice Bill's got the Reaper ship box in the background. Yeah, I saw that. The ship is out of the garage. I did a Saturday did coat a quick shade on it, and I forgot how much I hate this stuff. Forgot how much you hate what? Quick shade. Quick shade. Oh. Because it never fucking dries. Pardon my French. Yes, Bill with a swear. Zing! <laughs> yeah, that's that's rare right there, Bill. What zing, are you zing, doing? Zing, zing, zing. <sighs> You know what? I, I, it looks great. The problem is, I know when you put it on, it has a real bad shine and it doesn't dry and stays sticky. So, right now there's the second coat of dull coat on it. Your virtuous ears, now. that's funny. So, I do have surprises for. Oh, I forgot we were live. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. This what happens when you put me on camera. You're you on camera Friday. Stupid human tricks with Bill. You're on camera Friday with John. That's in the true. basement. And Thursday. Well, is he, let, was he letting the F bombs fly then, too? No, no, no. no. Jay, John, Steve, and Chuck, and Anna, I didn't really, I couldn't get a word in, so I just sat there quietly. A new Troller Games ad, everyone. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm going to show the new, uh, the new player uh, character manager. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. You're an angel, Bones. She is. Ooh. She's a little baby angel. Brad Trills, thank you for the follow and thank you for hanging out with us. Really hey, appreciate it. Hey, Brad, what's up? Gonna have a really cool. Well, I, I made sure just like on a Thursday night, we're giving away STLs. We have something for people who don't have 3D printers. Darling's gonna be joining us with that. So, hey, J Jeff, yeah. Jacob Jansen. Good to see you, man. Oh, yeah. Jacob said he was going to swing over. We That's were, awesome. Uh, Bill, how many of those wood holders did you get? I'm sorry, he, I'm sorry, Mike. What was that? He just posted a whole bunch of stuff, uh, new stuff on his Instagram. You guys should go check out. Like, oh, all his plinks and those, figure holders and stuff. Yeah. Those, those mini holders, up. man. Those Jeff, mini holders Jeff, are please insane. link. Jeff, please link all that in, the, in chat. Please feel free to. That would be awesome. For painters are awesome. Uh, yeah, please, what, what was your question, Jay? How many of them did you get from Jeff? Did you get any from him? From I, Jeff? Yeah, I know you. I know we got the couple from. We got a couple from. Oh, uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't have any. From oh, me. we got them from. Uh, from. Uh, I uh, have ones from uh, Jimmy. The brush. Oh, yeah, Jimmy the brush. And then I, right. have, uh, I have one of these uh, and a bunch of pill bottles filled with sand. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that adds weight. You know, so my hand doesn't shake. There he comes. There's Jeremy. Hey, Jay. Hello. Up in the shop. Hey, Jeremy. Hello. Hello, hello. How you doing, man? We're I'm almost... doing good. Good. I'm, um, I had a question real quick about screen share because I'm like my video is on a different computer and I'm on like a dual monitor that's like hooked up uh, to this computer that has the video on it but basically I'm so it's okay if if you don't have i mean if you can't you know z knife or show the show, show the z brush or whatever it, it's it's not a problem I, um uh, by the way morning and i will shout out your i'll shout out your uh, raid in a second once we go live okay so thank you uh, I know uh, Christine did the same thing. So Christine's head's going to look, look, see, Christine's moving one camera around. So there are, there is a way to virtual cam in X in zoom, but it, it's not a problem, man. If you, you know, it, it's okay. It, do you have a, do you have a, a cam attached to your PC? Is that what you have here? Uh, yeah. I mean, I got one. I was just wondering if there was like a choose screen to show. Up. There is, there is, if you have a multiple cam set up. I mean, if you have a second cam and you go into, if you see where the mute button is and zoom on the left or the video button is on the left here at the bottom of zoom. If you go in there and you click on that little, uh, that little uh, tent on, uh, where it says stop video up and then it'll have a select the camera, alt, end the switch. 
right? Uh, yeah, and that, that's the options there. So as long as they're active, you can change those cameras. Yeah, and that... Hey, that Christine, hello? Uh, yeah. Oh, she's going again. So... Everyone, check out Jeff uh, Jacob Jansen Studios Instagram there for all, all uh, great, really great things for, yeah. And, and if you can't figure it, uh, Jeremy, if you can't figure that out, and we go with just showing some stuff that you're uh, that's in print there, you know, that's okay too. Whatever you, whatever's comfortable, or whatever you can get worked out for you. Well, I'd rather not have faces. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, man? Come on, look at look at look at the uh, look at Mike, Bill, and me, and, uh, and, and and compare that. All right, so it's not like you know. I know I wow. Mike. Well, no, that's what I was. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I was just. Uh, <laughs> I I included, right, Jay. I included right, myself on that. Come on, that was funny. Can I just do share a screen and do that? If you do, uh, uh, if you share, if you share the screen, it'll crash. The, it'll crash the, the broadcast. If you share to Zoom, it'll blah. Yeah, it won't work. Okay. Uh, it won't work. If you share that screen, it, it, yeah, yeah. It'll it'll crash. It'll crash the entire broadcast because it'll overwhelm the Zoom feed in video wise. So, yeah. Where so where is where is your where's your camera right now? There you go. That, that's perfect. That's perfect, Jeremy. That works. There you go. It's perfect. As long as we can hear you, that's perfect. So everyone, welcome tonight. We got people rolling in still. It's gonna be an awesome show. So, now, Jeremy. By the way, uh, um, let's uh, let's give. Uh, you're okay let's give um, even though it'll be for next month let's uh, we're gonna do the giveaway we'll do the haunt woods uh, and maybe we'll get more people into the uh, uh, what do you call it um, into I haven't, I haven't your tribes I can't uh, I, we can't hear you you're real low now I'm here. Uh, I haven't put one more time I know you haven't no but half this oh, month yeah. half next month they'll wait they'll wait yeah. till next month yeah but wait till next month. Yeah, it's almost next month now. Yeah, it's almost next month. Absolutely. See you all right now. This is our first time doing multiple cameras here, everyone. So good evening. Welcome. I'm Jay Care, Lord Gazumba. What uh, we got a awesome group of talented, talented individuals tonight with a Crafters Creative Jam. Thank you all for coming on. Uh, thank you, Mornian, for the raid. Let me hit up. Let me hit up some follows that just came in. I'll get them all going. Uh, yep, yeah, I really, we really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm going to go and uh, we're going to go clockwise around the upper left hand corner. We'll introduce everyone, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll get rolling here. And uh, yeah, uh, we're going to see. Hopefully, we will see some really neat uh, applications tonight, Mac. It's going to be a fun show. We're going to talk some tech. We're going to talk some fun topics. Uh, and we're going to do some uh, really cool giveaways, one from Gamescape and one from Reaper Miniatures. All righty. So, darling, take it away uh, and, and introduce everyone. Uh, introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jay. This is uh, super cool. And I'm going to try my best to do some painting while I'm on here. But my lighting rig for this versus my paint setup is totally different. And I'm going right into streaming some D&D &D tonight. That's so. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know me, I am Darling Creep Show. I'm just your resident creep on Twitch. I primarily play TTRPGs like D and D, and I also paint D and D miniatures. Um, yeah, you can find me anywhere as Darling Creep Show. And in about a week, I'm going to be releasing my website where I'm going to start selling the things that I paint. So I'm super, cool. super excited. That's uh, excellent. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us. So uh, we've had one, we had a similar discussion a while back. We didn't call it a jam, but uh, welcome to the group here. So uh, we got a yeah. really fun group of, uh, and they all in a wor uh, work with uh, each other, and uh, we're really excited about this discussion. So welcome. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I, I can't switch cameras, so I'm just gonna have to. No, that's that works there. perfectly. It's okay. <laughs> 
Um, I'm Christine Van Patten. I'm a sculptor, um, character designer. Um, I primarily work for bigger companies like Reaper Miniatures and Dark Sword Miniatures. Um, but I have my own company, Moonlight Minis, uh, where I do monthly releases and I have like a monthly subscription thing where I do about three characters and a bonus model every month. Um, so tonight I'm actually going to do just like a fun character design and start sculpting it so you can sort of see my creative process and chat. And yeah. we really appreciate you coming on, Christine, uh, knowing that uh, all the work you do for multiple companies, including Reaper and for yourself. So thank you so very much for coming on and uh, joining this discussion. Really, really excited about it. Uh, Mike Disney. What's hello, going on, Mike? Hello. Not much. Thank you for having me on again, Jay. This is always been great. And uh, my name is Mike Disney. To everybody that doesn't know me out there, I do miniature painting, sculpting, illustration, and uh, I stream on Twitch at least four to five times a week. And I have an Etsy where I sell almost all the minis that I paint on my Twitch stream. So uh, right now I've just been busy studying Procreate and getting some more illustrations done for uh, some special projects and that's, that's pretty much it right now. And, and just playing D and D with Jay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the, the new recruits group, well, that was a fun one uh, a little while ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We had a, we had a good time that night. Definitely you, Taryn bones and, uh, darling. And also, um, two special guests, uh, crane and uh, lady Lavinius last time. That was a real blast. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we, Mike has some key character paints for our campaign and that is a, a wonderful thing. So, um, I really appreciate you coming back here. Thank you. Jeremy Gosser, one man, unbelievable, does it all. Gamescape 3D sponsors our channel. Wonderful. Jeremy, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jeremy Gosser. I run uh, Makerspace at a university in Kentucky. Uh, don't judge me for living in Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, then I run, uh, uh, I guess, a proprietorship called Gamescape 3D. And uh, I have subscriptions or you can just buy models. I've been doing it since about... Uh, 2013 2014 um oh wow i'm self-taught so uh but i do come from an art background uh, i just i just don't have any formal training in uh, 3d modeling um let's see i'm gonna make a couple little pieces of scatter terrain and i guess that's about it unless you're that's but we're going to show all the stuff that Jeremy's done. It's on our table now, okay? So he's being a little humble. So, mm. <laughs> you know, it's just an amazing amount. Plus this new piece that's coming out, uh, uh, the Hauntwood Scriptorium, which is only out in half, half of it. It is, mm. I'm already thinking, Bill and I are already thinking, where's it going to go in our Altamira box set? Like, what, what, what location are we going to use this the whole thing for? Yeah, I guess we'll have to talk about what you want to do with that or whatever. Yeah, um, and, and also, no, Jeremy's done custom work for us. I mean, we could not get a jousting set up for years, uh, and Jeremy was kind enough to set it up, do it, and get it all, and then that's how we got our jousting table. Uh, Bill crafted it, and, uh, you know, we, we're really appreciative of that, uh, of those works. So, and then we have, uh, everyone knows Bill, right? Uh, uh, whoops, uh, look, I hit a wrong button. Wrong button number one of the night. Wrong button, uh, the, wrong button number one. Instead of hitting, I went to I went to do an announce on Bill in the same spot, and I got the wrong sidebar button. There we go, Bill. Welcome. Oh, everyone knows me, Bill. Bill the Master Crafter, or so so Jay calls me. But uh, yeah, I do all the, the painting and stuff for uh, Jay's online game, and that's what I do. It's when when Jay uh, unchains me, I get to go out and leave the house once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not right. I'm not that mean. So uh, please note out of everyone, I have no talent compared to all these people here. All right. I just, I just DM and uh, 
different different talent. Yes, take advantage of of uh, of of what uh, comes together with uh, cra- with cr- uh, crafting, three D sculpting, painting, uh, scratch builds, and it all goes out onto our table. You know, and that's some of the things that help. Now, I have some setups here, and this is what we're going to try. We're going to try something a little different tonight. We'll just talk about topics, <laughs> but I have th- I have a three panel setup. I have this main one here. And then I have a highlight pick panel, which will bring up some of your works. That's, of course, if I don't crash the stream here. All right. Here's the Hauntwood Scriptorium, for example. All righty. Let me uh, let me go do and uh, and then I'll have a highlighted. Uh, I have highlighted screen. There we go. It works. Okay. So I got darling, and then yes, uh, <laughs> and then we can just easily, easily switch over to Christine. So this works. So that's how we're going to do it. We'll 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 keep things uh, going, and uh, you know, just talk some things. And uh, I have some topics and some questions to bring up. First off, let's just go. What Christine? What are you doing here? What's going on in this? Uh, uh, what what wonderful thing are you creating? <laughs> um. So I had this idea for like a like a witch character. Um, so Lamas is coming up, which is the first of August, and it's a holiday that's based around like the first harvest. Um, so there's a lot of tradition re- revolving around like bread and grain and um, mm-hmm. uh, like elements of birth and death and rebirth, right? Um, so my thought was that there's, there's this witch and she threatens this town into giving her, uh, the first maiden of the season. And if they don't, like she turns the maiden into a corn husk dolly and she sucks the life out of them in order to give herself eternal youth. Nice. Um. But if they don't, then she uses her corn husk army to attack the town. So they willingly give up one of their own every year to her uh, in this ceremonial sort of seasonal thing. And so I'm designing the the witch or the, I don't know, maybe she's like an arch druid or something like that. Very cool. Uh, that's Photoshop that you've got up right now with ZBrush, exactly, right? Right, so photo, I've got Photoshop up here on the right. I'm studying, I'm doing like a facial study of Michelle Pfeiffer because I feel like she has this element of like, even as she ages, she still has this youth to her face. It's got great bone structure. She's yeah. a babe. She's <laughs> such a babe. So like, <laughs> So I feel like she really captures that, like, maybe she's old, but maybe she's not kind of look to her face. And I want to I want to study her for for my hag character. And is that a Cintiq that you are working on? Uh, yes. Um, a 16 inch monitor, I believe. Nice. Uh, Cintiq. This is a, a Christmas present from my husband uh, last Christmas, and it has. It has been such a godsend. I love it. Were you using a game changer? Were you using a Wacom before, or Um, I was using a Lenovo Yoga laptop, which was like a is a pretty cheap laptop, but it had a Cintiq screen on it, so there was still some pressure sensitivity on it. Very cool. Well, Cintiq is a Wacom. uh, Is it okay? Yeah, it's a it's a a Wacom product. Yeah. Very cool. It's it's neat to see. It's just neat to see uh, in action uh, what what um, you know. Just th- great things you can do uh, with uh, you know. Just and the technology is not like beyond the normal person now, like it used to be. Right. right? Yeah. You know. So it's really cool. So uh, that is uh, step one of how far out on finishing a the mini it would it be on like how long does it take you from start to finish you think to create a mini um i mean it really depends on the complexity of the character but standard minis take me anywhere from probably eight to twelve hours just for like the sculpting part and then after that i do like post processing where i optimize it for supports and i do test printing and then i make edits to make sure that it's the best that it can be so there's a lot of like 
extra tedious stuff that <laughs> isn't really like the sculpting fun part. But uh, but the sculpting part takes probably about eight to twelve hours, depending on the character. So how long did it take you to do Scarn? You know that she created Scarn, right, Jay? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Oh, I, I did. I Scarn took forever because he had the dragon scale armor. Oh. And the dragon scale armor, I I was not very good at it, and I tried very various different methods to get the look. I tried M IMM brushes. I tried just like duplicating the same sub tool over and over and like hand placing them. Um, I tried probably like three or four different techniques to get that to look right. Uh, so it took a long time, <laughs> took several days of work, but I think it, I think it came out cool. It came out incredible. That's really, really awesome. Uh, so you're looking at, you're looking at 12 hours of work. 15, 10, yeah, what, what, like yeah. roughly for, okay. Yeah, okay. about that, about there. Yeah. What if you're under a deadline? Um, Re I mean, like for, for simpler characters or if I'm on like a really, really tight deadline so I need to simplify it just to get it out the door in time, mm -hmm. um, I, can, I can whip something up in like six hours. But that's like, you know, chugging coffee and making a lot of, cutting corners that I wouldn't normally want to cut. Excellent. I'm going to go back to the main screen here for a sec. So this is where, hey, it's working out, which is great. I was I was a little worried that it was it was not going to technologically not work. Hey, Gargamon, thanks for, for the raid coming in. Really appreciate it. So tonight, one thing, as Jeremy uh, pointed out, um, the Hauntwood Scriptorium is out in two parts. And uh, Jeremy uh, has uh, this on his Patreon and his tribes. Correct from my mini factory? Jeremy, right. is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And how much, is it like five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month? Uh, five for regular and then uh, eight bucks for commercial printing. So for $5 a month, you could have, the, look at the STL of this. I mean, it's it's insane, right? It's so incredible. just incredible. Just think incredible. about that as we're talking. And look, oh, Gary Con live coming in, awesome! Thank you, uh, Luke Gygax and uh, and Jason Charles Miller and the whole crew there. Thank you so very much as well. We are uh, we're we have a cre crafters creative jam going on here uh, session. So uh, both Gargamon, thank you for the raid, and Gary Con live. So uh, we have some legends here. We have, we, uh, uh, just so everyone knows, we have Christine Van Patten, who does um, great work with Reaper and does some stuff on her own. Like you did Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Is that true? Did you do them? You did a whole Neverland Pirate series? Neverland uh, Pirates. Yes, the Neverland yeah. Pirate series. Hey. Duff, thank you so very much for, for that. Uh, and we got some great – I'll show you what the giveaways are in a second. Uh, yeah, there's we, Captain Hook. Yeah, there's Captain Hook. Absolutely. It's wonderful, wonderful uh, thing. Uh, we also have – and we're, we're going to highlight each each one. We're going to rotate and ask some questions, talk to you about 3D printers especially. Darling Creepshow, Mike Disney, Jeremy Gosser, owner of Gamescape 3D and a sponsor of this channel, and Bill, my good, real good friend, Bill the Master Crafter. Um, so – Please, oh, thanks, Patrick. So tonight, we're going to do the two giveaways are going to be the following. And this is, uh, if you have a 3D printer, um, and I, I was just just getting into the tribes, and you, you'll get this automatically. Um, if you have a 3D printer, um, then you get access to, it'll be over two months, Hauntwood Scriptorium. Look at that. I mean, it is, this is just, Jeremy, you outdo yourself every time, man. Just nuts how, how fantastic this is. Secondly, um, I'm going to do two Reaper Reaper uh, miniatures. If we surpass, uh, what do you think? We clear a level three or four, I'll add, a, I'll add another miniature to it. All right, so that's for people who don't have a 3D printer. Well, Jay, do you have any uh, overgourds left? Oh, yeah, you want to do an overgourd too? Yeah, let's yeah, do an yeah. overgourd Yeah, right, let's do an overgourd print, print too. All right, let me see. I know I have them here. Yep. Thanks, Mike. We'll do an overgourd print as well. From Mike Disney, signed, okay, signed overboard print as well. And that'll get you, that'll get you going here. Oh, thanks for that. We got that hype train going. All right, Troy, thanks for doing that for Jason Charles Miller. It was very kind of you. So that's what uh, that's what's brewing here. So um, let's talk as we go to, as we go over to Jeremy. 
three, Gamescape 3D. Uh, so, Jeremy, can what do you, you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, so, Jeremy, okay. what do you got going on here uh, uh, as you're crafting? Uh, with, uh, uh, what program are you using? Uh, I'm just, uh, right now I'm in uh, Rhino 3D. And then uh, in a little bit, I'll go over to ZBrush. And uh, technically, you could do this in ZBrush, but I haven't, I haven't bothered figuring it out. Uh, <laughs> okay. The, the tool setup for it isn't like real direct, uh, like a regular CAD program. And since I do a lot of buildings where I need measurements for tolerances, I, I'd rather just do it in the setup in kind of a standard CAD program. So I jump back and forth a lot between, um, you know, sort of a hybrid program like this and ZBrush. So you are if I was doing like character modeling or something, I wouldn't bother, you know, I wouldn't do that in here at all. As you said, as you said yourself, you are completely self taught. Correct? Uh, so so uh, yeah. every, uh, so um what happens well, uh, do you ever come to Roblox to, uh, today? I mean, it's the stuff you, you put out for our table is just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, if you like, do you ever like, how do I do this? Like, is that, does that happen? Oh, oh no. There's plenty of tutorials out there. Okay. I mean, I've made friends with, you know, other designers that I can call up if I want a fast answer instead of figuring it out myself. The, the bigger problem is a lot of times you do things like once, you know, like uh, like let's say I taught myself how to do a Z sphere replacement for doing, you know, real rope knots or whatever. Like I need to do that again, but it's been like six months, so I forgot how to do it. So I gotta go to the <laughs> back to the tutorial and reteach myself again. Um, but I mean that's that's really the only uh, roadblock other than maybe not being aware of some tools so you end up going the long way around um but i try to i try to be efficient i got a pretty bad uh essential tremor in my drawing hand so i have to do everything by mouse so i really can't afford to waste time uh, hey kb okay not doing things the most efficient way what uh have what you do you go ahead I'm no go, go no christine go ahead please have you thought about doing um, like spell jammer ships? I know that's like a new. Oh, I don't know. I think thing the thing with. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, I just got time. I don't know. I, there's a lot of people doing ships. I'm not sure I want to get into that. And then the, the space thing is like hard edge stuff. So, I mean, anyone who does like SolidWorks or Fusion 360 can crank out a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, like the sci-fi type stuff without like necessarily having a lot of skill. Uh, and I don't know if that's a space that I want to enter. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm just not in a good spot to compete with that. So we have some, and I'm going to flip over back to the screen because uh, this is, this is the 3d rendering, but you got, you, you've got a painted setup of this already there. So yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, it's definitely been, a, you know, I think the 3D market in general is kind of like Netflix right now, where a lot of people got into that during the pandemic and now it's saturated and people are finding other things to do. So uh, even me with my little prices, there's been a pretty decent bleed off of support. And I know, uh, you know, I've seen some complaints from other designers. Uh, so I know there's plenty of other people stressing, maybe more than me. Uh, I checked your Patreon. Is are you in an all time high in Patreons? I mean, it's oh like, no, not yeah. at all. Oh I think no, I'm okay. At like, I'm at about six fifty. I think I've been as okay. high as seven fifty. The okay. tribes thing is holding a little more steady. Um, the Very the cool. biggest thing I'm seeing is people just disappear. It's not like they're dropping me to like go get the shiny object from someone else. What right. I'm seeing is people just straight up quitting and they're just quitting everyone. Well, that's interesting because, uh, you know, we're seeing like, thank you for the hype train, everyone. Really appreciate it. We, we're seeing just wonderful. I mean, this, how long did this concept take to come out uh, for you? 
I mean, you really, you uh, the whole thing in itself, like you thought about this and then you added the Archer Tower and all. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't really create like that. I just start making shapes and then it just goes where it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. So you, mean, don't, um, you don't sketch it out first? No, Can't there's be? no sketches. Wow. Uh, one of the guys, one of the guys who's a uh, history buff who uh, who uh, supports me, um, he mentioned the dove coat, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So that came from a direct suggestion, um, which is basically a pigeon coop, I guess, which you know we don't know about here in North America, because I, I think people pretty much stopped uh, using pigeons as like chickens by the time, you know, they started settling a lot in this country. Um, but I actually uh, looked it up and they're an easy bird to fillet. So, I mean, you need quite a few of them, but it's uh, pretty easy to clean them compared to chickens or turkeys. <laughs> um, you know, and so they would just set up these towers and just let the birds nest there and uh, go in there with a ladder and grab birds or eggs or hey, whatever Felix, they see. needed. Hey, Dr. Faust. So we got a, a really on point question that affects all of us here because we all have them, I think, and that is about 3D printers. And Dr. Faust says, is something this big split into smaller parts able to be done on a resin printer? This whole setup. No, this this one is definitely not resin printable. So I, I guess if you had a huge one, um, I'm not doing supports for resin printing on something this size. I did start doing some buildings in resin, and uh, and I've even done some where it's kind of split, like half resin and half FDM. And I think the community just isn't quite there yet, but uh, it's certainly getting closer. Uh, the problem is with the larger buildings is you have a lot more chance for separation of the building parts from supports. Uh, you also have issues of warping that can occur like the bigger these things get. So, uh, you know, it's uh, one of the problems is, is I just don't have the capacity to really test print something this size. No, no, yeah, you're At right. this point in time. And I guess, you know, um, you know, everybody getting a resin printer and affording resin for 14 inch prints or whatever, or eight inch prints, I guess would be enough. Uh, you know, and then setting up the supports for that and all the material waste that would come from uh, failed prints and whatnot. It's just a lot uh, to sort of manage that. Uh, certainly if someone's like a comfortable resin printer and they want to take that on, as long as they have an eight-inch printing service or a surface, they could certainly uh, do that and figure it out. Yeah. So we have two. We have two uh, uh, PLAs and one resin now, and uh, a majority. Bill, um, what's miniatures and dressing is where we're is right? Correct for the most part on the resins. Yeah, smaller stuff. Yeah, anything that's got a lot of weight. Even, even some things that are designed for resin, depending on the weight, will slip. And you just you just can't get good prints on them. But, uh, yeah, I stick to miniatures and just small scatter terrain. Okay. And let me, uh, you know. Uh, because, and resin's not cheap. So every wasted print is, I mean, PLA is not real expensive. But resin gets expensive when it's laying at the bottom of the vat. So... Darling just ordered a resin printer, but Darling, you're a miniature printer, so you, you love painting miniatures and smaller things. So it's probably it's probably the hundred way to the way to go for you. Do you? Does everyone agree with that? For for what Darling's using for miniatures? Yeah, yeah, yeah resin. Yeah, yeah. Mike, you don't want to put miniatures in PLA. Which printer did you get, Darling? You got uh, you got a um, not an, uh, an L. You didn't get an Elegoo. No. no. Any cubic? You got an Andy cubic. Yeah, it was an any cubic. It was the three hundred forty nine dollar any cubic. Yeah, I the boots yeah, it's, on that range. Uh, it's, it was actually gifted to me by one of my mods. That is so <laughs> on my awesome. channel. So yeah, very That's cool. So awesome. Yeah, that is that is fantastic. I hear. know nothing about three D printers, so you it's going to be a, a learning six, experience. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Jeremy. What was that? 6K. <laughs> you got the six K. 
I think it was a 2K. She it's, a 2K. it's a 2K. Yeah, oh, okay. the Photon yeah. S. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. We were looking into that 6K, Jeremy, and you, you know, it's just like uh, at this point, uh, we were thinking about the larger bed, but like Bill, Bill printed a whole bunch of those uh, of fungal miniatures for the adventure last week. And how many did you, Bill, how many of those were you able to print on that resin printer like in a day you got all them printed? Uh, yeah, I mean, they printed in four hours, give or take. Right. And I think they did six, six on the bed at the time. Yes. So, so there, there's, there's no, really no need for us to get a bigger figure at this point. I have, believe me, I have 500 miniatures here now. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have more than, uh, more than enough and I keep printing every day because now I'm working on pirates. So yes, absolutely. And some of Christine's pirates too. I've got four of Christine's done and uh, two more I'm working on. Dr. Faust, we still working on Bones 5 stuff, man, right? All the Bones 5. We got another. We got a secondary Bones 5 order coming too soon, hopefully. You know? Holy cow, man. What are you guys doing with all those minis? And look behind. See uh, that I, pirate ship? A, <laughs> I got totes and totes filled with miniatures. Not counting terrain pieces, a cemetery I'm working on. Uh, I probably have a, over 100 Battletech miniatures here. <laughs> Lord of the Rings miniatures, uh, you know, right? too much. So, Mike. Uh, probably 500 Reapers. Let's highlight Mike there. Mike, uh, how are you using your uh, Mars? You got two Elegant Mars uh, min uh, uh, 3D printers, correct? Yep. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, what do you, what do you, what do you been working on, man? What do you got going on right now? Uh, right now, I'm painting a board game called Marvel X Men United. Uh, X Men okay. Marvel United. So uh, I'm painting that uh, for my Etsy, and um, also uh, I've got like a couple other D and D miniatures primed up, ready to go. Uh, one is a sorceress, and then a couple of undead knights. So uh, that's that's what I've been working on lately, and and just uh, trying to get that stuff done. Let's show some of Mike's recent works. How about that? Some really cool stuff here. Uh, I got a whole separate folder for you, Mike. So uh, here's my favorite. Here we go. <laughs> Tiamat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that the Reaper one, Mike? Yeah, that's Reaper. That's uh, Maldrakar. Mal uh, whatever it is, yeah. Maldrakar, yeah. That is an awesome T. I think I have it in another angle, too. There we go. Yep. So... Uh-huh. Yeah, was that was that a commission work or is that uh Yep, that was a commission. Yep. That was a commission that that lives in Texas or Oklahoma now. I'm sorry. That is awesome. Very good to see. Yeah. So Look at that. Todd Stashwick is texting me. My my favorite head on that one is probably the black head. I I I think that one came out I don't know, just something about it looks looks awesome. But uh, they all they all came out. It was a lot of fun. That was a fun paint right there. It took took a long time because uh, I didn't use an airbrush for it. So <laughs> yeah, but that's the right. I mean, that's a good way to do it, though, isn't it? You got as much detail and texture in as you would airbrush. You kind of lose that. Is that what? Yeah. Well, the, the airbrush you can get airbrush is good for like zenithal highlighting and and yeah. and and getting your base colors down and stuff like that. But for for detail work, that I didn't want the the airbrushed edges, you know, I wanted sharp, clean lines. Uh, that's why I just went in and hand brushed it. So that's uh, a lot of dragon to hand brush. <laughs> that's a lot of dragon to hand brush. It's yeah, I've never seen that model in person. I imagine it's huge. It, it is, is enormous. <laughs> it's enormous. It's like a foot and a half feet tall, and uh, and and the wingspan's about a foot and a half as well. It is, um, Mike. It's like your work just is fantastic. Let me throw up. I like. I love this miniature too. I love this miniature. That's that's, that's awesome. That's a newer one too. Yeah, that's a, that's a Reaper miniature. Yeah. As well. Yeah, these I are all. Yeah, who I did that model? Me. This is a Reaper bone. This is new Reaper USA, isn't it? Bones USA. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a metal one actually. It's not it's not the USA. That's a I think that's a metal model, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, well, it's uh, look at the look at the bot look at the bottom of the of 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 the uh, cloak, you know, or, or the dress. It's just like you put that whole uh, that whole style in there, um, you know. Yeah, it's awesome, you know. It's really awesome. So uh, that that one's cool, and let's see what else. I got a ton of stuff in here. We'll be bouncing around. Explain this one to everyone. Expl this is like really interesting. This one, yeah, yeah, that's a showpiece uh, that I did for a, a, a client out in California. So um, I did a lot. Like I didn't use any metallic paints for the swords. I did all non-metallic metal. Which is, you know, making regular uh, regular colored paint look like metal. It's not instead of using metallics, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, all the etching and, and, and everything in the book. Uh, it, it took quite a long time for that miniature. But if you, I could show you other angles. I only sent you one picture. But she's kissing him and his faceplate is mirrored. So I did her reflection in his faceplate and, and the sky behind her, you know, well, the fake sky, <laughs> but, uh, and, and also his helmet, uh, behind the faceplate is really detailed with a lot of freehand and, and swirls and, and whatnot. Yeah. You did a lot of etch work, a lot of scroll work on that, on the helmet, yeah. if I remember yeah. right. Yep. That was for our wedding gift, right? It was, uh, they, they yeah, that was for a wedding gift. It was uh, it, it was for his wife, and she liked uh, she liked the color periwinkle, so that's why I did the uh, dress. So, um, wow, uh, yeah, it just I love this. Uh, just it's an amazing piece, and it's obviously a show piece. This isn't a playable terrain t piece here. Yeah, but if I didn't have to send that off, I would have I would have entered that in some contests, but I had yeah. to send it away so I couldn't 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 enter it in anything, you know. And that's a really big piece too. That piece stands about a foot high. Yeah, yeah, I remember you doing it on on camera, and it's just like it's really a it's really a neat a neat piece here, really awesome. So um, okay, well let's uh, see see, darling, I didn't go to you first. All right, feel, feel better. <laughs> yeah, I feel great. I feel awesome. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> I know this is all. Awesome. So uh, there, hey everyone, Todd Stashwick's on hanging out. Say hi, Todd. Good hi, to see Todd. you, Todd. Thank you so very much, dude. Love you. You know I do, dude. I love you all the way out there. You want to see some unbelievable talent? We got a, the, this Crafters Creative Jam going on. Really cool. I, are you are you going to tell us who Mr. Stashwick is? Todd Stashwick, actor, played it with the with Ed Greenwood. He has Morton Didif, who played in the Two Drink Minimum. Uh, actor from the Who's on Twelve Monkeys, the Twelve TV Monkeys, series. the TV series, The Riches TV series, Law and Orders, CSI's. Uh, oh, right oh right ton of yeah, great guy. Oh, thanks, Troy. Very cool. Yeah, hello, fellow nerds. And I played, he DM'd for me at Gary Khan as well. And he, was, he came on our Gabin too at Gary Khan. And he's a real good friend of mine. He introduced me to Mark Mir, who's playing next week with us and Ed Greenwood, which is even even cooler. And I really appreciate that there, Todd. It's, it's um, We're so excited about that game. Darling, That's darling, me. let's see what you got going on here right now. So I'm working on, oh, let's see if he wants to focus on. It's a uh, Reaper focus, man. It is the fungal guardian from <laughs> Reaper, which was so ironic. I, was, I started working on him on Friday night on stream. And uh, if you don't know, Christine Van Patten is the one who sculpted this guy. Yes. And she just randomly showed up in my chat and we got to chatting. And I, it was like, oh, man, this is so cool to be painting a model and the sculptor just comes in and hangs out. So it was just, you know, the stars aligned. And I, I had chosen this previously uh, from our last game that we played. And we had all those awesome, like little myconids that Bill had painted. And it inspired me because I just had this guy sitting on the shelf for a while. I was like, it's time. In fact, that like, same miniature was used in that game. I know. <laughs> it's awesome. I, I painted one for that. Yeah, I've, I've painted that miniature as well. In fact, that's the very first miniature I ever sold 
on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> this is like way out of my comfort zone for me because he's there's pink on there. He's very bright. I tend to stick uh, more towards muted tones, except for my beholder that I sent you, Jay. That's like one of my first pieces that I painted. Yeah, well, let's show some of your let's show some of your works here. How about that? All right. Yeah. Let's show some of your works once again. STL giveaway, the Scriptorium, Reaper Miniatures giveaway, Mike Disney signed Overgord print giveaway. So we got three tonight, okay? So hang in there. Exclamation point drawing. You just got to be on at the end of the show to claim, okay? So uh, here, uh, here's the first one we're talking about, right? This is your first yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, Eye Beast from Reaper Minis. Really? Conjunctivitis, the Eye Beast. Yeah. 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 I like it. I like it. Do you still have this? Or you, do you give it to someone? I or? do still have him, yeah. Yep. <laughs> See, Darling is good on teeth, on making teeth look really rotted. I'm going to show you on the next miniature. I love painting <laughs> teeth. I love painting teeth so much. <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, Vancouver Renee, good to see you too. So um, here we go. Bondi. Yeah. I named her. You did. <laughs> I'm making fun of the Bones and Mandy with that name. So, yeah, Bondy the Hag. She Look, was so much fun to paint. Yeah, a, a bust. Look at the teeth on that. That is just, ugh. That's perfect. I I feel I'm the baby of the group here, too, because I've only been painting since uh, January. The end of January is when I started miniature painting. Wow. but you Wait, like this January? Yeah, like this January. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a baby. I'm just learning. I'm just I'm just here to soak up all of your knowledge like a little sponge, guys. <laughs> but but your background's art, correct? Uh yeah, yeah. I, I used to oil paint on canvas. Uh I I took uh fine art classes in college. Um I've I've kind of a jack of all trades, master of none kind of person. I, I've always been very creative. I like to toy around with things and draw and paint and all sorts of stuff. So I, I just, I love playing this character, even though I got into a 5e fight, you know, <laughs> how the hell does the lightning bolt hit me, but not the person I'm swinging at? I mean, I just was like, well, that's okay. That was another story in itself. It's magic. It's magic. Yes. It's movie that's, magic. What, that's, that's what I, that's what I heard here. Uh, depth in depth coffin and corpse here. Really neat one too. Yeah, that I know bones. I can't let it go. the very first mini I ever painted on my stream, or just painted in general. I remember you painting it. I, I was yeah. like, I was like, come on. So I want to say this, and I don't want to get you embarrassed, but what? you, as last week, all right, the community. I keep track of the community, and I keep track of of viewer hours watch and stuff mm -hmm. you were the second highest uh stream out of all the channels that we yeah what yeah that's crazy yep Absolutely. that makes my face hot that does but it's <laughs> awesome because you're, you're doing D, D, you're doing crafting uh you know and i'm talking about that D, &D playing community who stream D, D content yeah so it was really cool to see that's super cool yeah. i didn't know that so you hit you, you you broke the top 50 which is fantastic Damn. so yeah Absolutely. I was, awesome. the monsters. I was yes. I was saving that for tonight, just a little tidbit <laughs> to give you there. So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Really was is fantastic. Um, um, and just you got you know content. You know content that people want to see is the key. Uh, you know, and just uh, doing uh, doing the right things, and it was, it was really cool. So uh, let me fun. yeah, just enjoy yourself. Uh, let's see here. I like this one too. I like this hearth fire. Oh my hearth! That was really fun to paint. I really like painting like like stone and wood te textures a lot. I want to do more terrain and buildings because that's really fun. Like just playing around with textures. I like that the effects on the stone are really good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's a nice highlight. Thank it you. actually looks like it's almost an LED. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. I, you know, and that's a that's a great thing. We we you know uh, we we go cheap on there. We get to 
I, I, we get the ones that the campfires that light up and stuff because we like the flickering effects, you know, I like the eye candy in the, in the streams. But this, this is really, a, it, you know, it looks like it is actually uh, flickering. And it's, Painting it's awesome. fire is terrifying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's cool. so hard. I learned that very quickly. I went into it uh, very cocky and I was like, oh, it's going to be easy. And I think I painted like just like the fire part like three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, for starting in January, that's amazing. So uh, amazing, amazing work. And uh, we just uh, now what we need to do is take that and uh, and bring that out to so that you have it in, uh, you know, we get some use in games like, you know, with Mike's uh, minis and stuff, we got to start utilizing them in, in the games, which is awesome. Yes. That's what we need to do. Yes. So, I keep telling Bones that I, I want to paint uh the the slav squad squad characters oh okay so we can do i mean yeah we, we can do that uh definitely we'll get with bill and we'll I'll figure be out picketing outside and uh and <laughs> oh strike. like 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 taking anything off your plate right absolutely absolutely taking anything off your plate would be a good thing i gotta shift the paint and if you, if you haven't seen the Slav Squad Squad, the squad, they're, oh my God, I almost like, I, I tongue twisted my South Jersey accent there. Uh, it's uh, five ladies and Josh playing Josh Pop. And what a fun group that is. Super fun. It is. and uh, we, we, Come we watch us torture Jay. Yes, absolutely. We'll probably have a stream <laughs> with them coming up and uh, we're going to arrange one for the end of August, I think. Nice. We, you know, we'll, de we'll definitely get one set up there. So... The tears of joy from it. Yes. Uh, Bill's in tears. Absolutely. So, um, Christine, you've gone, a, my gosh, you've gone a long way already. Look at that. I'm gonna, let me flip this back to just in that, just in that time. <laughs> that is, that is, so use it. it Using the bone structure and using uh, using the facial, uh, um, wow, that's amazing. How I much? Think that I, I used to skip doing the the drawing component um, because I would think like I don't have time to like sit there and draw all the stuff. Like I just need to sculpt it. I just need to do it. Um, but my background very very similarly is in fine art. Uh, I went to art school for drawing and painting, and then I ended up falling in love with art history, so I got a minor in art history. Uh, so my, I think my brain still works that way, illustratively, like two-dimensionally. So thinking through the, the piece on paper and sort of like giving my hand the muscle memory. Okay seems to transfer to the sculpt somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know how that works, but it does. That's really cool. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick, for doing that for Cave Geek. So uh, let's, let's talk about everyone out there in the audience and say they're, they, they may feel like they're intimidated by what Jeremy's doing here, right? Or what they're what, what Christine's doing. So, Jeremy, where where would you start if you wanted to say just? And I'm not even talking about in depth stuff. If you wanted to create like a fence or something and uh, and and print it to a um, a three D printer, give me uh, what would you, how would you recommend? Because you started from scratch yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess the big thing is you need uh, some software that you can get for free. Okay. Um, that's maybe some decent software. And if you're just doing like simple objects, I'm pretty sure you can still get Fusion 360 for free. And that is a, that is a constraint based 3D modeler, uh, you know, where you would click a line and then you would click another tab that says, you know, draw the next line parallel to this line. So even if you don't have any uh, natural drawing ability, like a program like that will help you uh, draw things out automatically. And another program like that, that's actually a cloud program is called uh, Onshape. And you can uh, run that on your telephone 
from what I understand. NIT also has scripted capabilities. So these, these are a couple of programs that, um, you know, you can get a hold of that uh, will give you, you know, real high-end professional results. Um, if you need something that's a little more organic, you know, at that point you have to, you'd have to take the model into something. They have some uh, soft organic sculpting tools in those programs where you can kind of push and pull things around. Like uh, if you're like making a balloon animal, um, but that kind of modeling is usually more useful if you were doing like, uh, you know, some kind of video or video game modeling where you were putting a skin over a complex shape. Um, okay. You know, I, I feel like ZBrush is unfortunately, you know, I know a lot of people use Blender, but in terms of like easy to understand powerful tools, uh, you know, in my mind, it's kind of the only game in town. Um, you can certainly mess around a little bit in Mesh Mixer to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, that's a good free program. Uh, ZBrush has a free version called uh, ZBrush Mini Core. I don't know how well that works for bringing in outside models. I haven't tried it. Uh, they originally had a program uh, that program was originally called Sculptress, and you might still be able to download that for free off of, uh, you know, a download hub, not off of ZBrush, but still probably flown around out there. And that's uh, also a, a very good program to get a feel for organic modeling. Christine said Mesh Mixer was just discontinued a few days ago. That's a shame. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So ZBrush got bought out by a different company. Um, and so they've been making some changes, one of which is that there's a, uh, sub they've switched to a subscription-based um, structure. So now you can rent ZBrush per month, I guess. That's so annoying. It's just oh, like Photoshop. It's just like, yeah. Adobe, yeah. Yeah. That's so annoying. Yeah. So, um, and I don't even know, like I have, I bought the the lifetime subscription thing, you know, like forever ago. Um, and I don't even know if they're going to grandfather that in and like, I can keep that or if I'm going to have to start paying. I don't even know. But, um, but I think you're right that in terms of organic sculpting, it's really kind of the only <laughs> the only viable choice these days um there's a steep learning curve with with zbrush uh which i guess if it i think you're right for things like animation and rigging and stuff like that um my understanding is that blender is better for that but uh i don't have the skills <laughs> Too I think the word you're looking for is patience. <laughs> that too, yeah, that too. Two cookie mm -hmm. questions. One was the program you, you have up, Jeremy, right now. What are you using? Uh, this is called Rhino. Okay. And the first program you recommended that was a, a good starter program, Varel BGM asked that. Oh, uh, I suggested uh, Fusion 360 or Onshape. Okay. And I mean, if you don't know modeling at all, you can just, you know, if you're not familiar with it at all, you can always go do some Tinkercad. But I mean, uh, that program will definitely get you into some bad habits if you stick with it too long that, you know, won't carry over. Uh, what technically, so what are you building there on, on your screen? Uh, it's this weird 16th century uh, book browsing machine. I can't remember who invented it. Oh, cool. But I'm doing some library assets and basically the book. Uh, oh, look at that. The book sits here on a shelf, right? And then oh. it's hooked up to gears. I'm, actually, I guess I don't need gears on both sides. Well, that's less work for me to do. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the gear would be over here and then it would run up against a, a larger gear. And then as the wheel rotated, it would basically change uh you know how this book is leveled so the book doesn't fall off its shelf 
and a person could like sit over here and then like we'll go through basically like seven or eight books at once without having to uh, do anything. And I've seen versions of this where they don't even have the gears. Uh, and I, I guess they just operate the whole thing by hand, but um, I've been having some fun with gears lately. So I'm just kind of throwing them in there. I've noticed that in a lot of your dressings that you've done some gear based uh, things, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there from the dark ages. Uh, and I've been doing a lot of exploring most recently on various methods they use to remove water from mines. Um, and there's just a ton of, of really crazy uh, mechanisms they use to do that, you know, wheel driven, even I found one uh, windmill driven, uh, you know, where it's basically like a corn crib elevator uh, with buckets that would sort of raise water up out of the, um, out of the mine. Um, you know, and to me, like that kind of stuff is interesting because, you know, if you're in a mine and that breaks down and the water starts filling up with, and the mine starts filling up with water, you know, that's like a whole basis for an adventure, but, you know, it's probably easier just to get a beholder down there and have people deal with that. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, those kinds of, you know, those those sorts of machines and stuff set up, uh, you know, interesting narratives in my mind for storytelling and stuff uh, that aren't like really obvious. Um, yeah, absolutely. It just kind of makes, you know, it just makes me interested in exploring it. And not to mention a lot of this stuff is so weird. Uh, you know, you never would have imagined that this stuff even existed. And a lot of the times it's weirder than anything you would have uh, thought of. You know, it's almost, uh, you know, it's almost sci-fi-ish. So, so some things that, um, and Bill, what were you, you were going to mention, you were going to say something. Uh, I noticed he has a master lab coming up. And yeah. Previews and stuff. And that's, that's great stuff, especially for anywhere. It can be used anywhere in a dungeon for people. So. Oh, that little planetarium thing. Yeah. Yeah, I figure people could crank on that and some curse or something could come out of it, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know that that's like a dark age thing. I think that's those are more modern contraptions, but I I looked at a couple of real ones and then I just kind of ad-libbed it because there wasn't really enough, you know, it wasn't really practical to make oops. a yeah, it's real very one. renaissance, very uh Da Vinci-ish. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, link into taking the minis that uh, the minis that Christine creates, the three D prints, uh, and the three D renderings that Jeremy does, the painting that, that uh, Michael and uh, Darling does, and then Bill, the master crafter, puts it all together and paints his own, and we end up with a full display scene. Uh, going so, uh, Bill, what what the heck are you working on right now? What am I working on? I'm yeah. working on the uh, well, it's not going to focus, but it's okay. It's the masthead for Soapy's Revenge. Oh, for the, for the big Reaper miniature uh, ship. Yep, yep. Very cool. Very very cool. That and then I got a bunch of pirates. Let's see who's this one here. This one's Boatswain Bill. I just finished him up. <laughs> if I can get a little better light on that, it's another Christine skull. Yeah, and of course yeah. I showed I showed Hook earlier. Yep. And uh, good old Salt. <laughs> another one, yeah. And let's see, the last one I have Turk painted. Turk is all finished up. I love Turk. I love Turk. Yeah, he's a cool figure. It's my first real attempt at uh, uh, African American skin, and I'm. Kind of happy with it. It's a you know it's a learning curve trying to paint different skin tones. So, and then I still have Mulligan and Smee to uh, to work on. So well, that's oh, awesome. Awesome. They, they came out great. They're, they'll look good when they're actually on the ship. <laughs> so we are tying in um, Carlos Lysing's adventure. Here it is. <sighs> Which is a sea-based. Uh, it's from. The, it's basically one of the slave lords 
uh, named Sly Ketta, Slippery Ketta. Uh, here, uh, tricker, uh, here it is. Uh, thicker than water. And uh, I want to run this one live stream. So Bill's been working on combining, you know, getting the pirate ship, getting, we want more sea base than what's in here and we're going to expand on it. And so this one's, uh, this one's one of those projects. Like every year we have a big project like uh, the arena. Um, let me, sh uh, let me throw that up there. So uh, this is the one thing I wanted to promote our other uh, 3d sponsor, uh, infinite dimensions games. Uh, because they do some great work here. If I thought I had the arena in here, and now I don't see it. Mm. All right, well, there, there goes that's, that. That's Jeremy's stuff there, all the ruins. Yeah, that's all the ruins, yeah, absolutely. But I thought I thought I brought the arena up into my folder, and I don't see it. But so, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it was this. Here's the jousting setup that, uh, that Jeremy had done. And so, in, in render, and then Bill has done taken all the prints, printed them out, made it look like real dirt, right? And made it look like, you know, put the banners up, gotten, uh, got the, got a, uh, what's the building? It was a washroom slash wood shop. Yeah, it's a combination uh, uh, mill, with lumber mill and, or right. a washroom, depending on what you print for it. Right. Created stands, created, so, and that, that gives us the entire, and then <laughs> the worst thing, I made him. I made. I asked him to paint seventeen mounted made. miniatures. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so and that put us. <laughs> uh But we're going to use this for virtual crowdcon. This is on my front page. Yeah, it's another angle of that picture. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christine said I'm evil, and from the nicest person in the world, Christine, to say that that that's oh my. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> she, she's picking up on your mind games. Jay. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, just wonderful stuff. Uh, we, you know, and just uh, it's a full it's a full team effort here to get this uh, to that point. And note, this is helping us for our Free City of Altamir box set that we're going to uh, publish. Uh, Anna Meyer and I are jointly doing through Troller Games because a lot of these visual pictures are going to help us really uh, with the city set up. So um, this is. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Jay, do you? I know you've been running D and D games for for a long time. Yeah, forty two um, years, forty two plus years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> long time. Do you do any of the writing or like adventure creation oh, yeah. yourself, or do you like to use sort of like the pre so fabricated ones? Nine back in the day when I was younger and didn't know any better, I'd say it was about maybe I don't know fifty fifty. But um, I do have. One adventure published, Horror in the Hools, that was published with myself and Carlos Lysing. I got it right here. There it is. And it's, yeah, Horror in the Hools, JS1. So I, this is the only one I have published. Um, I Normally, uh, 90, I'm going to say 95% is my own creations now. So we have a game Thursday night, and then we have a game Saturday night with Ed Greenwood. We got a normal group on Thursday. The Ed Greenwood special game is Saturday. I got my notebooks here somewhere. I'm working on finalizing all of them, get the characters and all. It's usually my own. Uh, but now, getting into this gameplay, and let's go. Let's go back to this, and I'll explain. I'll explain something here. Um, Jeremy creates this great and sends us this great. This, <laughs> which is unbelievable this is the warehouse and i'm thinking to myself how the hell am i going to use this in an adventure right so jeremy why don't you explain this one a little bit to uh, to everyone I, I got the schematics here the warehouse oh. <laughs> um yeah i don't know i just uh i did uh you know i guess i was one of the first people to do like a really large kickstarter and i'd done a two foot tall tower and by the end of the kickstarter it had a four foot print of something like three by four feet <laughs> and alongside that i also designed a really large inn that um i never i haven't finished and i also designed the idea for this warehouse um, and actually there was supposed to originally be a merchant guild on the front end of it um and i was saving it for a kickstarter uh, but then I had some medical stuff last year and kind of needed uh, a couple of months to plug something in. So I released it on Patreon uh, to sort of take up some of the work. And uh, it's basically a warehouse where you can keep adding center parts 
Technically, you can also make it go up to the third story, but I never designed stairs, a stair piece for that. Right. Um, There's the expansion piece right here. Yeah, but it, it can just keep going longer and longer. And I guess it's about six inches across. There are open lock space. Yeah, Ryan, there are open lock clips, but right? Uh, uh, those pegs, yeah. are they open peg? Yeah, they're they're just like little pegs that you can stack it on. And the idea with this design is uh, some of my supporters had wanted walls to be removable. So I basically designed this. So, you know, if you're having an adventure and there's something going on in there in the tabletop, um, you can remove those walls so people can easily see into the inside of the building. But then you got people like Jay who just go ahead and glue the whole thing together anyways <laughs> and destroy, <laughs> destroy my elegant design. That's, that's my fault. I'll, I'll take credit for it. Yes. So <laughs> this... But, but I did that knowing how the terrain gets handled there, Jeremy. No, so it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's always so, my yeah. fault. It's always yeah. my... So here we go. <laughs> here we go. So with this adventure, I did one called Rumble in the Warehouse a few weeks ago. Set it up in Altamira and set up a whole story around how I'm going to use this warehouse. One night, one shot of Christine, and that's how that's how it goes. So I I like to think when when someone when Jeremy's is kind to send us them already printed, and that we don't have to print these out. Um, and thank you, Elucian, Elucinian Mystery. Thank you so very much for the sub. Uh, I want to utilize the stuff, and plus I want to get it out there and help him. So uh, the same thing with Mike. W Mike's done a couple. Mike's done Holly. Mike's done Sir Vargren. I want to utilize those minis when they're painted, you know. I threw Holly in that adventure. That Mike, you know, she just showed up and was just hanging there, right? But I want to use. I want when, when people send us stuff, we want to use it in the game. And I got, and that's part of the thing as a DM now. I hope that answers a little bit of your question, Christine, on creating. I take that into account the visual effects of our game. So. Hey, and I appreciate that question. It made me feel like I'm part of this discussion now. That was awesome. I really thank you. <laughs> you certainly are. No, I because honestly, you know, we're we're all talking about these various skills that we have developed, but yours is a skill that I've tried to dabble in and never really feel like I've gotten, uh, which is really how to run a game smoothly and and make it fun for the players and fun for you. Um, Thank you. That's a that's a whole skill set in and of itself that in, that encompasses a variety of uh, smaller skills you have to master. Yeah. And uh, some more good news, Jay. They started. They added a PDF download section on my mini factory, so all of us sculptors are going to need you to write mini adventures. Oh, cool. and, uh, <laughs> mini stack cards. Uh, hey, 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 no, you're not there. supposed to tell them about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you going to send him a cake or something first? And yeah, I was, was going to bribe him first. <laughs> that, we can do that. We, we can all work together and do that. That won't be a problem. So I want to mention something about this table. As you can see, we have Jeremy's roads. You can see the roads here. You can see two different types, right? You have the King's Road in the back, and then you have the dirt roads, which are awesome. The trees are all custom scratch built by Bill. The building to the right, right here, that's a custom scratch built by Bill. This uh, this is Infinite Dimensions. That uh, This one here is Jeremy Gamescape 3D. This one here is a custom build by Bill that lights up, right? Uh, build the, uh, the 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 um, the attack. Uh, you know the the the. Oh the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the stable. Yeah. yeah. The corral. The corral. Yeah, yeah it's a little yeah. bit. It's infinite dimensions and somebody else. I forget who who it is. Yeah. It may have been an universe print actually. This is Jeremy's. Uh, Jeremy's. Um, great mills back here. We love this old mill. And then a lot of this is is. Um, a lot of this is uh, miniature building authority still. So I use uh, an, an underlay, you know, I use a lot of all encompass. Oh, the, these light up street lights, they're Dwarven Forge. And there's miniatures out there from Reaper and some plastics and all. And it's all, and here's the adventuring party right here, as you can see, just in the picture. So this setup pick here has how many different companies or how many different people's hands on it that has done something to bring it all into a visual you know look and that's the, the thing i'm trying to say is is that we are so without all you know 
we're so appreciative. It just, it really adds to it. So, yeah. All righty. I dabbled enough. <laughs> You're a dabbler. I'm a babbler and dabbler. So let me see if I can switch this here. So um, I, I want to go over something that, uh, Christine, I'm going to try and get your other ones up here. But I, I, I want you to talk about this. All right. Um, once I get it on the right screen here. And that is, uh, I mean, you look at this. There you go. This oh, is, right, right, right. Yeah, color study on miniatures. Look at that. Yeah, so so, um, so color is like that's that's my thing. I love color. It is probably like the single most inspiring uh, part for me as an artist, uh, which is it's kind of hard to like let go of my my little things that I make <laughs> because when I'm making them, I have like a particular vision right for what they're going to look like and like other people take that and then they're inspired and they do you know they bring their own level of skill to it and uh which doesn't always isn't always what i thought right when i was making it so this was a way i've been using on twitch to during my streams to be able to explain um color theory and sort of more advanced color techniques to the people who follow my stream. It's a way that I can sort of educate and, and give back a little bit more to the community. I got it open, Christine. So let me just hit some of these up here. <laughs> Fembots, that is awesome. So, uh, yeah, I got I got a lot of your renders up uh, in the file. I'm assuming your husband sent these to me just now. So that's yeah, uh, yeah some really st amazing stuff on my my uh, mini fat. Here's the Neverland Pirates one that Bill's been working on right here. That is right, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That that is really cool. Are you guys uh, gonna use the Reaper pirate ship? Did you get one of those? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so you see it back in the background of Bill right behind him. Oh yeah yeah. 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 Hi Jess. Hi. <laughs> that was his daughter back there. Oh yeah, absolutely. We have a second one on its way too. She, uh, well, she brought down an art piece that she did for me. She made me a a Reaper coaster. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. She's talented too. She made me something too, but we really can't show it. So, so <laughs> these these things go together better than you might think, because uh, while Chris Lewis was working on making that ship. I was finishing up my pirates, and so he asked to use my pirates uh, to send Ron some, like, work-in-progress stuff, and they could gauge scale and sort of, like, see what it would look like and how cluttered things would be with actual characters and models on there. Um, so, really, my, my pirates and that ship have been together since before that ship was ever finished. <laughs> and that ship is huge. It is huge, and it's so cool. It is, I told Chris... 40 inches. Said, this is... Well, uh, the, fully assembled, it's 40, 45 inches long and 18 <laughs> inches tall. Yes. It's so epic. I don't epic, know where though. we're going to store it, but... I got a lot, a lot... Next step is a lot of dry brushing. Yeah. I have two. <laughs> Yeah, we we have another one on the way whenever it gets here. I had like to have so. the glow in the dark one and the regular one. Can't just have the regular one. So uh, I have one of them. So Ryan ninety eight or three? Do they come without bases too? I can't get bases to print attached and unwarped. Uh, oh, for my figures, yeah. um, all of my new stuff I release supported both uh, based and unbased. Okay, um, but those figures are quite old. They're they're one of the first ones I released under my own brand, and they do not come without bases. Um, some of them, like the anchor pirate Boatswain Bill, he's uh, he's like so a, integral to the base. There's not yeah, really a yeah. Way it's to a big, it's off. a big base. It's it's a two inch base for him, pretty much. Yeah, two inch. Very cool. That's a big one. This is cool too. Join the tribes. Oh. Oh, my husband was just telling me that uh, 
all of those figures have just recently been resupported by Atlas, who does all of our supports now. They're a fantastic uh, company. Cool. Um, very talented support people. That's a whole talented skill in and of itself, um, and they're fantastic at it. So they just did all of the supports for those models. If you have had trouble in the past with printing based figures, I would suggest trying these because you might find that they just work. Uh, can you can you have your husband while we're going on uh, link your tribes in in uh, in Twitch chat, please? Oh sure, yeah, 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 please, so everyone can go. What's your what's your uh, what's your subscription for tribes? Um, do you know uh, how much per month? I, I don't know. I don't deal with any of the money stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your... I don't. I think that's like. I think it's important because I don't Sky like Earth. getting hung up on like right. how much money we're making or how much things cost or like any of the analytics because then I think it starts to it starts to mess you're with you when you're heart. creating. Yeah. Thanks, Gagath. Thirty-eight months, Gagath. My gosh. Yeah. So wow, these are beautiful. These uh, these mermaid tribe uh, uh, ones. Yeah, I'll get some really. Oh, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what else we got. I'm assuming this was from Pumpkin Patch. That was from uh, last ha Halloween? Yeah, that was our, our Halloween set last year. Nice. Uh, super cool. fun set to make. I loved it. Be, like, they will make an appearance this stuff. year. Yeah. <laughs> I love the seasonal stuff. Like I love seasonal D and D games. Those are my absolute favorite. Um, so I love making figures that can sort of fit we into that. We plan on doing an overgourd uh, adventure every Halloween for a while. So nice. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mike. We promise that. All right. So let's. Um, I want to. Uh, I know uh, Darling's going to have to. You got about a half hour, so yeah. Um, I would like, if possible, mm -hmm. for Darling, because Darling's a new one here. Everyone who's a painter, and even if Jeremy, give Darling a piece of advice. For, Please. Yes. <laughs> How's that yeah. sound? A piece of advice for her for painting, and even if it's so a little tidbit or trade. Uh, who wants to go with that, Mike? Um, well, I've, I've seen her painting. I don't know really what advice to give her. She's, she's doing an incredible job. Uh, Thank you, Mike. Off, off by herself right now. So, I mean, what, what, what kind of advice would you like? That's, that's really what the, the point is. <laughs> like, um, what are you looking to, per what are you looking to, to, to do better? I mean, I can tell you some of my issues that I've ran into lately. One of them being, uh, my brushes the tips of them kind of curling up really easily and I don't know if it's something that I'm doing but it's like warping the shape so I don't get that fine point no nope, those that, that's that's because they're synthetic brushes uh synthetic brushes have a ten tendency to curl at the tip no matter if you clean them or not you are I, I assume you do clean your brushes with brushes. yeah yeah it, 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 that's synthetic brushes it's the way they they do i've got a brush right now that i've had uh it, shit you not i've had it for eight years and it's been curled that entire time but i still continue to use it because that curl is still in a point so you know it, that's it, fair. It, it still it still it still works for me but uh my my advice is if you don't like the curling uh, go with sable brushes and keep them clean. Uh, you don't have to clean them with soap after every paint session, but if you have a really heavy paint session, I would clean them with soap. And then, uh, you know, just 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 keep them nice. Like Windsor Newton Series 7 sables, they're expensive, but they're well worth it. I've had mine for well over a decade, and they, wow. still, they still have their point to them. But wow. I only use those brushes on show pieces yeah like, I, I won't use those brushes to do like tabletop work or like the board game i'm doing right now all those x-men figures that's all that's all tabletop work it's not it's not something i'm not using any blending or anything like that i i i use i use shit brushes on those yeah you know? so that and and just go from there you know but sable brushes are if you're going to invest the time and you're passionate about your miniature painting, then 
investing your brushes, investing your tools, and uh, you'll you'll do good. Yes, Thank so you. Cafe asked, do sable brushes curl? And if you take care of them, the answer is no, right? They, they can. Don't. They can. Okay. Better. I've never had a say I've never had a sable curl on me. It cheaper ones do. But okay. uh, uh, I'll tell you if if cheaper sable brushes, Reaper has inexpensive sable brushes, they're like eight, nine dollars a piece. Damn. Yeah. Uh, I've been using one for over a year now. And uh, when the point starts to, to spread, I clean it, give it a good cleaning, and uh, point reforms and and I don't have any problems with it. I did. I did invest in my in my first sable brush uh, recently. I have a really, really good local art store, um, like a small mom and pops place, and I got I got a, a a two from them, and I I like it. I've just been using it very sparingly because uh, I get what Mike's saying on you know don't use your sables on all of your tiny little tabletop things like those are for your show pieces so i painted some of the hag with the sable right um, right but yeah exactly that's they see that that's like what did jay name your hag bailey bondy bondy yeah. like that's that's a show piece you know that's something that you really want to pop and and you want those fine details on it and you want those nice blends and sables give you that and that's what i would use that on but something like your fireplace which looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Uh, I would not use sable brush. On yeah, fire no, at all. That's that's dry brushing. And that was a lot of cheap dry brushes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what that's for, you know. So cheap uh, dry brushes, old makeup brushes. Yeah, I. You know, I thought about that because I have quite a few of those. <laughs> uh, or, or your 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 Walmart Five Below special cheap makeup brushes. They're great for I dry buy, brushes. I did buy a set of the Army Painter dry brushes. And, and I'm, they're expensive. I don't even know how I feel about them, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I've been using them for a minute, and I just, I don't know if I like that. The shape, they're kind of weird. I don't like to bash on companies, but no. I, do not, I do not use Armory Painter products. I don't use their paints, and I don't use their brushes. I did the try their paints. I don't, I, I wasn't a fan of their paints. I, yeah. find, I find that their dry brushes uh, shed aggressively yeah, yeah. Their, their their brushes are not they're not good quality they don't last long i've i've used their brushes before and i don't like i have brushes that are you know 10 12 years old in my collection uh army painter brushes i they didn't last me hardly at all yeah amy amy crittenden asked about uh um how do you learn to keep paint out of the ferrule i'm really bad about that keep cleaning them yeah, you just keep them clean and keep them keep them clean when you're dipping your brush. Uh, make sure that you you're being very aware of how much paint you're putting on your brush. You know, that's brush control and 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 how much paint you're putting on your brush and how much you have it thinned to where it's not traveling up through the belly into the into the ferrule. You know, that's that's an art form in itself right there. So just be wary of, of how much paint you're putting on your brush and where it's going. That's the only tip I can really give anybody. Yeah, and clean your brush periodically if you're using the same color a lot and you're using a lot of it. Painting big areas, clean it. I'm constantly rinsing my brush. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it helps no, that's, me. That's a great thing. That's 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 a great thing to constantly. I have my uh, my whole garlic cloves jar. <laughs> that's my brush water and I just constantly slap it around in there and Shattered go saying, thank you so very much that was really kind of you really appreciate it you want to keep your uh, rinse water clean too because there's particulates inside of your rinse water that can get into your brushes as well so after every brush session and i'm i should practice what i preach because i don't change after every session either but you should always always change your brush water uh after each paint session and if you use metallic paints never ever ever mix your metallic paint water with uh with your regular oh, cool. color water because you yep. can get metallic particulates in with your regular paints and the next thing you know you're painting skin on something and it's it's coming off shiny and you see metal flakes in it you know you yeah, i would also think caution, about that i would also caution against using 
good sable brushes with metallic paints. Yeah, the roar of the brushes. That just Never doesn't used, come yeah. out. It's like glitter. It's just think of it like glitter. Whatever it touches, that's it. Just throw it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a really good point. Never use your sable brushes for metallic paints. You, you're always always use your shit brushes for metallics. That's, that's good yeah, to Dr. know. And Doctor Faust just put a good one up there too. Don't leave your brushes sitting in the water. Yep. No, I feel like that's a cardinal sin. <laughs> yeah, because if they're sitting in the water, chances are they're they're against the bottom of the pot, and they're gonna it's gonna curl them, it's gonna bend them. That's one of those bad habits that I've just never been able to not do. <laughs> And, and and don't do what I do. Don't lick your brushes. Why? Why? Please tell because me. Because it tastes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I love my tongue when it's all tingly. It's weird. Uh, it's it's toxic. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, 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 it's toxic to do that, you know. But is there, besides like the, the obvious reason of it being toxic, like is it going to cause any harm to your brush? Is it going to mess up your paint job? Because I lick my brushes like it's my job. <laughs> um i don't know if it'll ruin your brush i i don't i'm not a brush licker so it's not gonna ruin your brush yeah it won't like not that i'm a proponent for licking your brush but <laughs> but it's not gonna ruin it so jeremy what do you think about brush licking uh, i i don't do it <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> that's all awesome. i'm painting terrain so if i licked my brushes i would just be a mouthful of paint <laughs> Uh, that's I awesome. mostly lick my brushes after I rinse them in the water because it always gives me that good shape back. Yeah, you want your point. That's why I want my point. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, it. But you can you can get that point by using the crease of your hand. You know, I use um, my my that... thumb a lot yep. when I'm painting. Yep. Yeah. Yep, your thumb too. Any crease on your hand is is good for giving you that that nice point back. Just remember where they get the hair from on the animal. That's right. <laughs> you uh, might rethink that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, uh, <laughs> so you're what? licking butt hair. You're licking butt uh, hair. Yeah. I was trying not to what, say that, Mike. It's what I've always wanted. I'm just living my best life out here. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I love this angry dwarf. That's a chibi dwarf right there. It's uh, I forget where it's from, um, but I, I forget the company exactly. But that's probably one of my favorite painted minis. He was a lot of fun to do, and uh, yeah, his beard is fantastic. I, I hated to see him go, man. I hated to see him go. His eyes were really hard to do because they're set back in that helmet, you know. Right. And, uh, it just, you know, I've got. I think four different colors in his eyes. You can't see it because the shadow in this picture, but uh, yeah, his eyes were, his eyes looked really good. It, it, that was just a, a lot of fun to uh, do this many. What is this creature? That is Mortarian from a, a game called Warhammer 40,000. Oh, it's is 40K. A, okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a, a demon lord pretty much. And uh, yeah, he's 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 a scary big bad dude right there. And that many right there, I'd say he stands about eight to nine inches tall, and the wingspan is about about the same, eight to nine inches. Yeah, looks pretty amazing. I do. Warhammer minis have to be so freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, it, well, exactly. It, it's, it's so frustrating. So yeah, there's yes. So too. There are some great. I mean, I look. This is an awesome mini too. This is uh, Frost Giantess. Yep, that's Frost Giantess right there. One of my favorite minis there too. I have one of Mike's. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, well, I have two. Yep. I have two of Mike's actually, but I have one in my hand. I don't know where the other one went, but I have one in my hand that I keep over here on my little shelf. I'll show you, but it's a. Um, it's a little oh, mushroom yeah. boy. Oh, there you go. Okay. You, you've got three of mine, don't you? You've got. Oh the, yeah, because I have a Gabby too. Yeah, you, you can, have a you Gabby. You made a Gabby for me. Yeah. Here's that. Here's another frost giant. Frost giants are always fun to paint. I love this. The blue is my favorite color. So uh, doing the skin tones on the frost giants and everything is 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 good fun. And I like the the white beards, and they always have these big fur 
coats or something on, you know, and it's just, it's, it's fun to do frost giants. I, I love them. It's, um, they're just like big dwarves. That's why you like, yeah, them. that's exactly <laughs> right. It's a, they're huge dwarves is all. I'm, uh, floating through here. Some things here. So, yes. uh, uh, Ryan, I add green stuff all the time. I convert my miniatures and add green stuff all the time. Oh, in fact, this miniature right here is a Warhammer 40,000 miniature. You can't see it because of light, but uh, the banner in the scythe, in the skull, and the iconography on his uh, on his shoulder pad was all sculpted by me with green stuff. So. And Ryan, that is that is a point that I want to stress with the genius of Bill, because I want to put this out. And uh, this is not a Jeremy bash here, but this print is older. And it was look at this. This uh, that's all added. So Bill, go go for it. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this Elven Tree Fort. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a cool print, uh, but basically just to to add a little little detail and a little extra life to it. It's, it was awesome. It's, uh, it's sea foam and uh, some sagebrush added in just to just to fill out the detail a little bit and add, add a little light to it. Yeah, yeah, not a lot, not a lot to it. <laughs> just yeah, the sea foam is sprayed with a uh, spray adhesive, and I sprinkle it with coarse uh, with coarse turf, and then uh, add a leaf effect to it. Is that going to be the home base for my lost boys? <laughs> <laughs> It did, that does look like it could be, right? Right. Yeah. That's what I would use it for. <laughs> yeah, and then that upper tower has options too. I mean, that's that's yeah. the room that's on there, but then there's one that's more of a crenellation battlement style that you can just put on it as well. Yeah. So, Jeremy, this was an older print, right? Uh, yeah, that's uh, second, uh, like a bonus model I did when I did uh, the two foot tower Kickstarter in fall of. 2019 so there, yeah this is three this is this is almost three years old two and a half years and uh, beautiful work yeah uh, 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 yeah stunning. yeah and uh so um yeah i think to be honest one of my um jeremy the big the big giant fortress is the ruined fortress is great but the the building in the background there the swamp hut oh that, yeah that is an unbelievable yeah. piece right it's here it's a, a great building yeah absolutely an unbelievable piece the swamp hut love this it's great because it's a, it's a two multi-story so you you can take it off and there's a you know the basement in there it's all mud filled and it's uh, it's a great piece we yep. still need to get jeremy to do the uh the overgourds hags hut oh uh, yeah halloween's coming up isn't it yeah oh yeah. there we go you know with the little little pumpkin patch out there by the by the hut and everything yeah. and you know, you just made Bill's nose, ears, and mouth bleed because now he's like, "Oh my God, I got to get this done by October." If we're gonna. Yeah, if the, ship, the, the ship has got to get done first. Yeah, I know <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, that's a, just a combination of what what you can do to adorn things and make them, you know, make the changes and enhance them beyond, uh, you know, painting these up real nice. As you yeah, can I see. mean, there, there's yeah. nothing tough about it. It's just it's just looking at it and. The the raw materials is what's what gets you. It gets expensive buying raw materials, sagebrush especially. Well, yes, and that's part of support of the stream. Comes right out of the budget, so you know we we. Well, we, I mean, even finding it, a lot of places. Yeah, finding sagebrush is tough. Yeah, finding sagebrush. At least on the east coast. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So, if anyone, hey, Mike, do you have any uh, concept sketches for for that idea? Mike, why don't you why don't you sketch that up and get it to Jeremy, man? Yeah, absolutely, I can do that. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I I do uh, terrible at following sketches, but at the very least you'll have something angry to, to be angry about. No, when I you send that it. over to me oh, and get something think... else back. I'd leave it up to your interpretation. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it'd be it'd be great if you strayed away from the from the uh, from the sketches or whatever. You know, because it's it's just a simple a simple witch's hut is all it yeah. is on top of a pumpkin patch because that's where the overgourd came from he they they slaughtered they executed the townspeople executed the witch out in front of her hut and uh she cursed them and then gave birth to the overgourd and the overgourd killed everybody <laughs> right. so that, that's, dark. that's 
It's, it's yeah. a super man to be. <laughs> what a gal. Could you throw something together this week and send it over? Yeah, absolutely. I can try and do that. Absolutely. Okay, because I could do it. I got some space in September. I'm going to do a mining facility, but it's kind of a cleanup month for me to finish up some uh, half ideas. And then uh, that'd be a good spot for it. I think I got some space there. Ryan D., thank you for signing up for Moonlight Minis Tribe. That's awesome. Great to oh, hear. Thank you. Welcome yep. to the tribe. Yep. So uh, I still can't find this one thing. I'm going to have to go to a, a, a subfolder. So uh, any other, what other questions do you have there, darling, for the crew here? It brushes is a big one, obviously. Um, I mean, uh, I think a lot of my stuff has to, has to do with like the technical side involving brushes and the paint. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys use any kind of medium to thin your paints. Uh, I'm, I'm Pretty sure both of you work primarily in acrylics. Uh, I just use water, um, but if there's something better, that's always good to know. Distilled water. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why distilled water specifically? Well, we have hard water here in Jersey, so uh, you end up with a lot of mineral that builds up in the brush and in the paint. So I, I that makes keep, sense. I keep a gallon of distilled water, and I just use that. Okay. But I mean, depend, it really depends on the paint. Uh, like Reaper, I'll use distilled water in a wet palette and very rarely do I even have to thin it. I found, uh, I found Reaper paint to be a, a little on the thinner side. I use primarily Vallejo, mm -hmm. which is, it feels very thick, very solid. So I'm finding myself diluting it a lot, but I like that because I feel like I have control over how thin it's going to be. Well, with, with Reaper paints, the thin ones, you don't even have to uh, to thin them down. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. That's, that's that's what the good thing is about most most Reaper paints. If you experiment a little bit more with them, you'll find there are thicker ones. Like I I I, I tend to see like the lighter the color, the thicker the paint is. Uh, it, it, but it's not true with black. The black is very thick as well. So, but I, I tend to see that the lighter the color on Reaper, the thicker the paint is. I don't dislike the, the Reaper paints by any means. I think I just, I started with Vallejo and then I, I've only commented here uh, and there. Not like, uh, Dr. Faust just commented, you know, he thins his paints a lot. Yeah. Uh, and he does lots and lots and lots of thinner coats, which is which is fine. Where I I'm trying to get coverage and get done. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> honest. So I mean, there's a big difference yeah. between my paint and Dr. Faust paint. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. So I'm trying to get things done more so than I'm trying to. I'm not selling mine. It's going on the game table. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, the, the, the thinner, thinner, more thin layers is is better. Yeah. Uh, well, so I have a question for for Darling. You yeah. said that you went to art school, and I, feel I didn't like... go to art school. I took colleges and or I took classes in college, but I definitely didn't go to art school. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, because I feel like I don't want to like give advice that yeah. you already know, like you already been through the repetitive stuff that isn't useful. Like like Mike was saying, like what did what do you want to get better at? Because we don't have like we don't want to tell you something that isn't useful that you already know. I think for me, uh, I spent a long time shunning acrylics, and I primarily painted in oil. And I used um, I my biggest mediums were oil and charcoal. Okay. So moving into the world of acrylics, uh, this is painting minis is really my first time painting steadily with acrylics is very stressful because the blending is totally different yep. than with yep. oils, but I don't like the idea of painting uh, minis with oils. So I do more so, layering than blending. I could totally relate to that because in art school, like acrylic is the kids paint, right? Yeah. It's like, that's, that's the stuff that you give to people who can't paint. Um, <laughs> But in the world of miniatures, there's like a similar sort of bias against oil paint. People are like, oh, oil paints are for like, you know, those are, those are what 
losers use. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's unless you're like, watching Wapalicious. <laughs> oh, right, God. Uh, he's insane. Yeah, Waffle's amazing. But, and I had the same sort of bias when it came to, to miniatures. I was like, I don't want to do oil paint. And I had painted with oil on canvas, but I didn't particularly like it. I didn't particularly like acrylic either. I was a watercolor painter. But, but I was, I was, watching Wobble and he sat down and spent like several hours with me at his booth showing me how he paints in oil and I was like this is like painting in watercolor this is like exactly what I would want because acrylic works the exact opposite of the way I intuitively paint yeah and yeah. so oils oils became my go-to because it was it was so much more similar to watercolor paint that it felt really intuitive to me. Yeah, try try oils, darling. If you're used to oils, try oils on a miniature that you don't, you know, especially a miniature that you're not going to be really worried about how it turns out, you know? Yeah. Just the just blending is spinny. so yeah. fun. Your blending <laughs> is easy. It, honestly, doing it, because I've done a, a, a couple of miniatures with oils, and uh, it's it's like dry brushing. It really is literally like dry brushing, because you, you, you get the perfect blends. You get, it's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I think the thing that scares me is the dry time versus- It's not bad, because I you're like really the... still working in thin layers. True, yeah. It depends on how much spirits you use in it, too. It'll dry faster. Right, yeah. Well, look at that. Look at that. I mean, my gosh. Uh, let me, uh, let's see where our, our sculptors are here real quick. Uh, you've got some unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, let me try and like make this. Whoops. I moved the wrong thing. For see. You guys to see. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> there. Wow. All that in an hour and a half. That's crazy, Christine. Yeah, let me try and like. It looks like an, it looks <laughs> like, it looks like an, an evil, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, that you had up there. Oh my gosh. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah. I was about ready to say Susan Sarandon, but I'm like, no, no. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, I think she, I think I like her face. I think she's got like a, she could be nice, but she also has like an evil side. Don't mess with her. Yeah, that they're the best kind because you just don't know what to expect. Yeah. The, yeah, that evil look. The little, just the hair of vileness. You know, don't don't cross me the wrong way. Uh, that's all. You so, end up with a rabbit in a cook pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so now are you going to attach that to a full body, the full full sculpt, or is this going to oh, be a yeah. bust? Yeah. Okay. No, no, it'll be a full figure. Yeah. I got to figure out like what the rest of it's going to look like. But <laughs> that is cool. That is awesome. So, how much of that of that image you're doing there can you actually import into a 3D model to to work on it, or is that strictly just a 2D drawing? Oh, this is this is all three D. This is all three D. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't see you spin it earlier. Okay. Yeah. So can you you can import that and put it right in and then work down? Yeah. So what I usually do is um, I make a Z sphere rig, which is kind of like a a skeleton, um, and I change the proportions of the skeleton to match whatever character I'm making, and then I compose that skeleton, and then build up the rest of the forms, the musculature, the the costuming and props and all that stuff on top of the the base skeleton. But I will put this head on top of that once I get that posed. Yeah. That is unbelievable. I don't know. What do you guys think we should name her? Uh, Bondi the second. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> let me think about this. Hmm. Name her Michelle. <laughs> no, no, no. I can think of plenty of nasty characters in our campaign, Bill, right? Yeah, well, it depends, too, on how you're going to design the body. So, I mean, that has you're, a lot to do with it. Yeah. I mean, I've always had that. an idea for, for a witch to be named Gussamer, like Spider Silk. Oh, that's a good idea. Did you ever, you seen that movie Into the Woods with Meryl Streep? I have not no. seen that one, no. She plays the, this <laughs> witch, but she's got, like, I don't know. Her character is so relatable because, yes, she's, like, evil and, like, she really just doesn't care about anybody but herself. But on top of that, her points are not wrong. Like, people suck. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, like, they've 
consistently just screwed her over and so she's just kind of like done with it um and i feel like i like characters like that where like even if they're evil even if they're the villain there's something relatable about it where you're like i could see how you got there <laughs> yeah she's uh, she's got that little bit of a shit eating grin to her so two two quick questions from the audience. Uh, Ryan uh, asked, uh, when you're doing a figure, do you need to sort of exaggerate facial features to get them to read right on the table? Oh, drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, where a normal, like eyes in particular, you you blow up three to four times the actual eye size like of a normal proportioned human. Um, so then everything else, of course, has to adjust in accordance with that. Um, just awesome. to be paintable. But there's a lot to it that's like, uh, this is a downside, I think, to digital sculpting is that a lot of sculptors in clay would never be able to make something humanly proportioned, like properly proportioned. Um, but in ZBrush, you can. You can zoom in like <laughs> to the bazillionth pixel and get all of that little detail in there. The problem is when you print that and then try to paint that, it's totally unusable on the table. Yeah, impossible. Yeah, um, yeah Jason, eyes are eyes are so much to paint to paint to begin with. Right. Yeah, Jason Weeby really put it in a way that I felt was a perfect explanation. He said, "We're not we're not sculpting art. We're sculpting tokens. These are avatars, representations of people's characters." Yep. Good and if point. you yeah. can't tell that from three feet away on the tabletop, then you did it wrong. No, no, that's a great point. Uh, so, uh, and that wasn't the case back in the 80s, like the miniatures. Sometimes it was, you couldn't see much. The miniatures that are coming out now, uh, Bill, uh, you know, we, uh, Bill picks some really good ones to represent characters. You know, you know, like we, I agree with, we got a custom miniature for him. You know, it's Revel Antar now, you know, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Point. Here's, uh, I think a lot of that comes through in the color language too. Yeah, um, true, true. For the painters to really like give the character a personality through color and communicate a, their archetype and their sort of um, personality. I don't know how to answer this question because I don't understand it because I'm not an artist. I know, bon I mean, Darling's got to leave shortly. It says, uh, Shattered Saint, have any of the painters ever tried anything in the Blanchitsu style? No, I haven't. I know what he's talking about, though. Mm -mm. It's like a, a darker, grittier uh, style um, okay. uh, of, of painting. I've, I, I know exactly what it is. I've seen, I've, I've follow uh, quite a few painters that that's all they do, but uh, I've never tried it myself. It's just not something that, I don't know, it's just, it's just not something I've tried. Okay. Hmm. It says no one has said that they have. Okay, yeah, I'm not familiar with the style at all. So. Same, yeah. Not, not not a trained artist. I just do it. So, Same. <laughs> I've never heard of it either, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Darling has a D and D game she needs to run. To. I do. So, uh, anything in closing you'd like to say? I, I, um, thanks follow. for having me, and thanks everybody for giving me so much new knowledge this evening. I really, really appreciate you guys so much. Last piece of advice about painting? Yes. It's only paint. True. So you can just paint over it or strip it off and do it again. Yeah. Happy little accidents. Exactly. <laughs> we will be raiding into Darling tonight when we're awesome. done. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll Thank you so much, guys. Right. I will see you all soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you soon. So it's going to explode out and it's going to be big. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so, but now the other screen is going to be a little messed up. So I'm going to go over here and fix it. And we're going to talk about what Jeremy's doing over here. Wow. Look at this thing coming up. So let me fix this real quick um, as we're going here. So Jeremy, uh, you got uh, you got some kind of uh, wonderful, uh, looks like um, Leonardo da Vinci did contraption. Let me, uh, let me get this worked out here. Yeah. On, so I'm not really going that fast. It's uh it's all right. Kind of hard for me to work with all the talking, actually. But well, that's a, okay, man. This uh, is this is. <laughs> let me tell you something. I think everyone uh, is everyone out there enjoying this discussion tonight and the direction we're going with this. Uh, you know, I think we're. I, I think uh, it's. It, this has been a real, real enlightening uh, discussion so far. 
and I got to shrink this. I got to I got to figure out how to do this here. Do this like this and do this like this. I that's so relatable though. Like I I started Twitch streaming my sculpting process and um I got to say having my husband there to sort of fill the dead space and talk while I'm too focused to be able to talk <laughs> right. is really a godsend. That's awesome. This is uh, and thank Christine's you. Tim. Stream is fun. She takes she takes input as she's doing things, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, Bill's always hanging out in there. He's, I try. He's you know, awesome. Between between you and Mike, I try yeah. to keep my daytime filled. It, while I'm working, it gives me uh, sounds like I got a friend in the car. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to switch over here, and I want to talk about, like, uh, uh, real quick here about uh, comp these are the miniatures that we played with, um, some of them. Uh, one of them is, is Christine's that Bill painted, right, uh, this one here. And then these three were uh, uh, prints that Bill did on 3D printer, printed them up, and this is from the adventure with uh, that Mike played in and Darling played in with the new recruits, just some of the uh, new uh, fungus men that we have out there, just showing, uh, you know, some different colors and things. Uh, so, Bill, um, I, like you said, you you get stuff out on the table for table gameplay, correct? Yeah, that, yeah that's it. That's yeah, I mean, my stuff is, it, unless it's something I really want to work on, but most of it is, uh, Jay said he needed uh, fungus men. I'm like, well, uh, you know, what do you need? <laughs> and when do you, you, oh, you need them by uh, four days? Okay. <laughs> no, well, let's rephrase this. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, this one's not the way that that happened. I said I need, I need a couple of fungus men to guard a chasm. Sure, I did. So I did nine. So he did nine minis. Oh, so, wow. So uh, including the bru brute and the uh, little spellcaster. So from there, I'm like, I got it. I had it. I had th I had multiple Dark Elves in the adventure, a worshiper of Zugtmoy. Um, so I lessened the dark elves and I put, Bill did them. So I put them in more in the adventure. Once well, again, I did them in different scales. I wasn't sure yeah. if they were doing small mic and hits or large mic and hits. So I gave me the options. Yeah. And that was really cool. But I'm just saying that that's one thing that, so I might be, he actually did above and beyond what I had requested, which was awesome on, on that one there. Uh, I want to shout out, um, I want to shout out infinite dimensions here. This is their arena. I mean, <laughs> you know, this is from, this is from, um, this is, uh, when did we do this? Uh, Gary Khan. This is, uh, we did this at Gary, Gary Khan. Khan. Yeah. Gary Khan live. And, uh, yep. Just and Bill, two, two, two Gary Khans ago. Yeah. And that is, uh, you know, uh, really neat. We got all the, and then we have, uh, here's the, the, the side vendor. I mean, look at all the adornment on this right here to build it up. So just to show you some detail on it. And that's all, you know, that was boarded by him and painted up. So just give them a little love here and some of the great things that they I remember did. when you were still, like, putting this one together. So. It wasn't done this, yet. This was, that was big. Yeah. It came out so cool, though. It's fun. I, that, 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 that's the kind of stuff. I really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. I like the big curing pieces. Problem is storage. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, those yeah. are the fun ones to do. Yep, and even right here, right here is Lord Gazumba himself, right there, just watching in the uh, the audience as there's a fight going on in the arena. So, <laughs> yeah, a fun one. Yeah, Heartless. Ryan. See, I told you. Yeah, Ryan. Yes, I have improvised a combat encounter based on terrain. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, definitely. And they're just yeah. You know, do it all the time. You do it all the time. You did it in the last game when uh, Taryn was running up on the hill top and then uh wanted to jump off of that cliff 20 feet 20 30 feet down on top of the uh yeah. uh the quaggeth you 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 improvised right there I yeah i let her do it absolutely with some points yeah. and some and making the rolls and things and that's and that's part of that's part of being a dm and part of an enjoyment of the experience um so uh yeah it, 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 it's a wonderful uh you know being dm such a fun thing you know uh, I'll play once in a blue moon. Oh, I have a big announcement. We'll save for announcements on me playing in something. What? Be here to, oh yeah, it, yes. I will save it because it's uh, it, it. Wait, you'll be you all be shocked. Uh, I think I don't even have a banner for it yet, but it's yeah something we'll be playing in. Uh, and coming. Christine has a manufacturer's award for ReaperCon this year. Yes, and I'm going to Ooh, yes. Yeah, Let's I show did. this. 
Let me go to, um, there's Jeremy's setup there, which is so awesome. Let me go to that one. And then, as you can see, um, I'm working through, uh, working through this. Still, we go here, and I know I have, boom. Yeah. So, uh, describe what we got here, Christine. Uh, so, Reaper does their own uh, set of awards. Um, but they also allow some manufacturers to offer their awards. Um, some of the ones that already exist are Bombshell Miniatures that gives away melee trophies. Um, and Dark Sword typically gives away trophies uh, when Jim's there. Um, Midnight Heroes has got one now. Midnight Heroes has one. Uh, I'm sure there's a few others I'm forgetting. Um, but this will be the first year that I will be offering um, a manufacturer's award trophy. Nice. And I just finished sculpting and designing and test printing this one. Um, I'm, me and my husband were both so happy with it. It came out beautifully. We cannot wait to see all of the entries and like give people a trophy. We're going to do the bronze, silver, and gold. But we're also going to be doing one additional award which is a moonlight spotlight and it's just something like the coolest thing i saw in the competition it doesn't have to be one of mine doesn't have to be like anything in particular um just something that i really want to give an honorable mention to as a way to just promote the hobby and celebrate mini painting as a whole um that's not like just geared towards my stuff <laughs> very cool that's uh Neat to be able that they allow people to do that uh, and companies to do that. That's really great of them. And Reaper's always been a wonderful partner and sponsor for a lot of us, uh, and uh, an employer for you, uh, Christine, which is great. So, uh, oh yes, absolutely. They've always been fantastic for me. They've gone out of their way many times over to help me out. Um, there's actually last year I had talked to them last year about doing a manufacturer's award, but my brand wasn't big enough there was like certain qualifications that you have to have a certain number of miniatures in your line and um, stuff like that before they would consider you for for that um, so this year I'm just so excited that I was able to reach those benchmarks within a year and that we've grown so much That's that uh, we can do this now so I'm super excited we've been getting um, sales all week from Etsy because we we do our own printing for Etsy. So if you don't have a printer and you still want some of my stuff, you can do Etsy and we'll print it and ship it to you. It's all master quality prints. Um, have your husband I'm, link that in chat, please. Oh yeah, we'll do. Um, and so, yeah, that's been amazing. We've gotten all these uh, orders and people specifically saying in their notes, like I'm ordering this for entry into ReaperCon. And I'm just like, oh my God, I can't wait to see everybody's stuff. It's gonna be so great. Yeah, it's it's super exciting. I'm I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, um, you were uh, you're doing that. Uh, just and that things have come so well uh, along so much so quickly. There there goes the ex, a, a Etsy store there, everyone for the link. So like you said you don't need a 3D printer to have uh, access to the minis, which yeah. is fantastic. So um, with that, why don't we do some shout outs? Anything else you'd like to shout out, Christine? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I feel unprepared now. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that was good to jump right into that. I mean, uh, what's going on in your tribes? Or, you know, you got anything uh, coming out new uh, there? Or um... We've been doing so much stuff. Um, the big thing is we're prepping for ReaperCon. I'm teaching four classes nice. for ReaperCon. Um, I'm teaching a color class, which is all about how to communicate character through your color choices. Um, I'm doing a design a next Reaper figure class where it's it's just a character design class, but whatever we come up with in the class, uh, Reaper has agreed to produce. So we'll come up with a design and we'll brainstorm a bunch of stuff. We'll find references, we'll draw it out, sketch it out. Um, and then I will come home after the con and sculpt it and Reaper will produce it. Nice. That's pretty awesome. So you can sort of like be there from the beginning and have some input into uh, Reaper's next figure. That is um, really cool. We're going to be doing a speed painting class where uh, 
we show you all kinds of different techniques to just get some decent quality minis tabletop ready in as little time as possible, um, just ready to go. Great for doing like, we call it paint the hoard because huh. it's just like, do you need a hoard of goblins? Do you need a hoard of orcs? You know, here's some like quick and easy ways you can just throw a hoard on the table that looks good, it looks painted, it looks ready to go. Um, so that's always a fun class. We've taught that one before. Um, and then the last one we're doing is a composition for dioramas class where we talk about how to set up uh, an entire scene and some of the, the major um, elements there to consider when you're trying to compose a scene, uh, how to lead the eye through the piece and, um, and get something that you're really happy with. So yeah, that's what we're doing there. We, we just released our new and new birds. I did a whole bunch of bird folk uh, oh, for cool. this month's release. Um, they're sort of in like a tropical Caribbean sort of setting. I've got a toucan and a flamingo and a cockatoo. Um, these were just super fun characters and we got to sculpt them on stream and talk with people while we were making them. Um, Do I have that in the renders that it was given to me? I don't. S oh, you know what? I don't know. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I can okay. send it to you. Nuana. I can send it to you really quick. Yeah, it, uh, it's okay. I, it'll take me a little time to get them on. I just, I, I got to be careful not to crash the stream. Because oh, you know right, me, right. I'm a stream crasher. Boom. <laughs> yes, yeah. you are. Yes, I am. This guy's Jeff, thank you for the for the resub there. Next month, we're going to be doing bunny girls. I've got a big buff paladin with a giant shield. Um I know bunnies are like a new playable race, so there's not a whole lot of figures out there for them. Um, but I've been having a blast sculpting these bunny girl characters, and I hope that uh, other people really like them too. <laughs> you didn't talk about your space bears tonight. I'm surprised. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Spelljammer figures. I did a, a hippo monk girl, um, a slime girl, and a, that uh, one I man have. a mantis girl. I have that one. Yeah, they came out really cool. My husband's like super stoked about Spelljammer. He's all about it. So uh, we started making some characters for that. And we will, we're, we're going to expand on that. We're going to do some more. I think we might even end up doing like a set of each race. So like three hippos, three mantis girls, stuff like that. Um, because nice. we had a real, we had a lot of fun and we learned a lot through this process. And there was a lot of stuff that we felt like we couldn't just squeeze everything into one character. So we want to do some more. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. You said uh, your tribes is, you know, tribes is very uh, affordable for everyone. So it's just, a, it's, it's a great, great concept. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, a re it's really been awesome. And I've got like one tier of my tribes where we do um, one hour a month with me. And I set it up for like a tutoring sort of thing. But people end up using it to basically commission me to sculpt their characters. <laughs> but it's Great. super fun. I just get to spend a, an hour on Saturdays or whatever day uh, we set it up and just talk to people and get to know them and like bring their characters to life over the course of a few months. Um, and it's just been really great. I've already finished uh, two characters so far and I've, I've got three more started. I think we only have like one more spot of that tier available because it just filled up already, but that's been really, really cool. Well, we really appreciate you coming on tonight. This is a, a wonderful uh, discussion and uh, Christine, thank you so very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, I always like coming here and like just hanging out and talking with the guys. That's <laughs> it. Just ta talking and enjoying enjoying uh, the discussion and everyone learning from each other. Uh, that's uh, that's that's fun in it uh, in itself. Um, absolutely, uh, Jeremy. I have up your towers here that were a couple of months ago, right? Uh, what is what is coming up for with Gamescape 3D? Uh. I don't know. I'm trying to work with someone to do a Kickstarter again. Um, okay. Looking at that uh, C stack stuff I was talking to you about mm -hmm. uh, a couple months ago. So that'll be coming up. And then I'm going to just like shift gears after I tie up some loose ends next month. Um, 
I might do some orc stuff, like Badland orc stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, some uh. more of that draw stuff that's, uh, you know, underground, kind of uh, Stalin Egyptian style. Um, I put out a number of options in the polls, and people are pretty much evenly split. The only thing people didn't seem interested in was uh, like halfling forts. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I put out is doing some more uh, wood elf stuff and more of a vein of like the wild elves where it's kind of like more like nests or, you know, almost like a, you know, they'd almost be like goblin-esque kind of uh, right. tree structures, you know, where they wouldn't really, you know, wouldn't be that Tolkien kind of stuff. No, that's, uh, that's cool. And the orc stuff wouldn't, you know, it would definitely be more in the uh, OSR vein of like orcs. It wouldn't be, you know, Warhammer-esque or anything like that. There wouldn't be a magical elephant graveyard where people were making all their orc tents out of giant tusks or anything like that. You know, it'll be very primitive uh, kind of rock structures, maybe incorporating you know, looted wagons and stuff like that. Um, ruins? Built into natural features. Anything that's ruins, that's dressing, or, or that, that you just mentioned, that is gold for us. Put it, like, as you can yeah. see, that with your this keep, the keep here, look, look what's immediately to the left. You know, we have this huge, we have this structure right here that, that's just, that one of your, love that, love all the, love all the ruins, love all that, uh, you know, it just adds to it. By the way, this is the penultimate piece that, <laughs> uh, months and months on the print, uh, printer on the inside, and you can see that Bill's dressed it up so well. I mean, this is, you know, our, the big, the big castle ruins has multiple levels in it. It's just a fantastic piece and it works I'd, very well. Yep. I'd love to know, like, how much story do you think of kind of behind the scenes when you're making big terrain pieces or even like smaller terrain pieces how much of that has got your own uh, sort of head canon uh hardly any really <laughs> um that, that's uh that's you know i really just put shapes together like i don't know i come from like i i come out of an art program but it's like more theory based uh, so they never taught us to like draw or anything. It was mostly just about thinking about, uh, you know, like you come up to uh, a canvas and how do you justify the shapes and ideas you put on that blank canvas. Uh, and that was really the focus, you know, more of a sort of a intellectual Frank Stella type approach uh, to fill in the space. So for me, I'm really just playing with shapes and then I'm waiting for those shapes to tell me the story that it wants me to tell. So it, it's kind of a surreal process, you know, like if a person was just sort of scribbling on a page and then, you know, waiting for some kind of story uh, to come out of that. Uh, so it's like kind of halfway between illustration and you know, fine art thinking, because, you know, at the end of the day, there is some sort of predestined function that has to come out of the shape, you know, like I don't go in there, you know, if I want to do orc stuff, I'm at least thinking about orc stuff. I probably looked at some pictures of orc stuff that I liked. Um, but then, you know, I'm just kind of playing with shapes and seeing what catches my eye. And then I just sort of dive in from there. And of course, I balance that out sometimes with doing more historical stuff where I really am just straight up copying because you do learn a lot about detail from uh, figuring out, uh, you know, the other way. Like ways. deconstructing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you, you know, and that's kind of the nice thing about some of these historical gear driven things is I really had to like, you know, some of this stuff is so weird. I can't even figure out how it works without, you know, really researching it. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a nice balance to that sort of loose approach. And you really Thanks need start. both, you know, otherwise you're just kind of, I don't know, you just need a balance, you know, and I think a lot of creative stuff too is about building rule systems, uh, you know, not just to follow, but also to break and, uh, history is a nice, you know, vehicle to sort of anchor, um, 
you know, the more surreal sort of meanderings where I'm just sort of going around looking for something, you know. He leaves. I don't know if that's he leaves helpful, the use but, to uh, the decision making of the use to uh, I guess uh, the DMs of the world like me. So I, I come up. So this is used for. This is Scarn's Ruin Keep, Wolfmaster Keep in, in one setting, and I have it in two other locations as well. Um, there's a Ruin Keep in the Pomars or stuff, for example. So I, I place this. I, we don't we get use out of this, you know? We try and get use out of uh, uh, multiple um, of things that are done. And, you know, like you tell, like, Bill's done all the, you know, beyond the painting. I mean, you can see, like, all the, the moss coming up and the tree inside. You know, it's just... You know, it just adds a, a, another unbelievable level to it. And uh, how, Jeremy, how many? Of these, there's only like two to three of these that are even completed, right? In the world, this one is uh, so. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I've only seen. Uh, I'm a pretty good one for attracting people who don't share the stuff they make. <laughs> uh, I'm probably. I think I might be the king of that. Um, yeah, I, a lot of people who like being left alone seem to like my stuff. So. Uh, as far as I know, maybe five or six of them okay. that I've seen. So this is like 220 pieces of prints, if I recall, roughly. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So but Bill, you just make it look so like, <laughs> you make it look so lived in and natural and like I don't know, it just looks like it belongs there. <laughs> the scattered terrain really really makes it too absolutely awesome. yeah yeah i mean that that really fills in things but it's the little things adding the barrels and the sacks and and you know that that stuff scattered around inside it does it bring brings life to it retro in, in, gamer uh, meth is actually on he actually printed it for us uh hey mike yeah because we built there was just no way and Bill, retro gamer meth has like four or five printers and it took him a month to print the entire thing oh for my us gosh. yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, but the scatter terrain is so huge. And another thing that Jeremy has, and I, I can't find them, ruined buildings, he's like the best at. I mean, they are unbelievable, the ruined buildings we have now. I'm going to be using I finally a picked up some of uh, Grout because uh, Bill grouted that whole castle. In, uh, yeah, all the lines when I used yeah. both seats. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can That's see the grout. Idea. You can see the grout here. You can see it yeah. here. Yeah. The grout really. Uh, you uh, totally, you totally painted that before you grouted it. The grouting's the last thing. Uh, right? Both. There, oh, there's both? a big. It's base coated, then I grouted, and then uh, then it's it's dry brushes and washes on top of the grout. Over, over the grout, and that didn't like mess up like the lightness of the grout too much, or. No, I used. Uh, I yeah, I used a lighter a lighter grout, but yeah, I wanted some of it to look aged, so. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, and, the, and the dry brushing help, helps bring it back. Yeah, and I wanted it to be brighter ruins, so I, I use more light grays uh, and like a vanillas on it to, to, to bring the, the highlights back out again. All right, I want to make sure I got the order of that before I go grouting a bunch of walls. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's, uh, there's, there are some great terrain builder streams that I follow out there. Uh, uh, Real Terrain Hobbies is a guy out of Canada who does some absolutely incredible things. Geek Gaming Scenics, uh, he does some great stuff. So there's 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 some really good guys out there. There's nothing I've ever done that's original. I've shamelessly stolen from everybody. Well, that's not, <laughs> yeah, you've you've taken it to your level. I mean, come on, man, you got to give yourself a little credit there. You yeah, know, you've taken. I had to learn it somewhere. Well, so. yeah, but my gosh. You know, you've taken it to a level that is, you know, it, 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 it's, it looks, uh, you know, it stand, it, it differentiates us from every D&D stream out there. I mean, yeah. that's just, that's just the way it is. We are, Absolutely, you know, that's, that's yeah. what we're known for is, you know, old school Greyhawk and the visual effects of, I'm looking for the ruins building ones and I'm going through the numbers. I, I, I'm going all the way back to like 945. Oh. I can't. Yeah, we used them a ton of times. So yeah, I know. Right. It's not, I, I think I got one. Jay compliments us too much. There's no room for us to feel good about it. <laughs> there you go. Look at it. So, so look at it. I have that in here, but look at the ruins. This is all Gamescape, the road, the ruins. Look at the rubble here. This is all rubble pieces that are the great dressing. That's not Gamescape, but everything else here is. Mm -hmm. Everything else you see is. Look, and there's that, uh, that uh, again. This is the one with the druid. Remember the druid one? I think Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah. Uh, no, the, that's not the Druid one. That's the Druid not the one, Druid one. The Druid, the Druid was up on, on the, the hill. hill. Yeah, you're right. So, um, yep. It's, uh, it's really awesome. So, and you can see this piece here. This is a separate piece to this. That's a whole separate piece. Right? So you can print out, you know, um, these are all separate pieces. You get the oh, idea. Yeah, the scattered terrain pieces are great because they're, they're not... They're not huge. You can put them either way, resin or, or PLA. And, and Yeah, and they fill out the underlay. They fill out the underlay. They really make, yeah. you know, so you know, a little trick there. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah. Jeremy, what, so uh, you got a lot going on. Uh, so I guess, Mike, uh, Mike, we may have a project for the uh, Overgord coming up with uh, you and Mike. That's awesome. Oh, I'll be working on it this week, definitely. That'll be, that'll be my Procreate uh Oh, yeah. uh, project for this week that's awesome fantastic what yeah, else you got something out and send it over yeah. yeah what else you got going on mike well i i forgot to mention that uh we finally got the new art prints that uh will be oh this is skarm versus the overgourd nice and uh they're a little bit more in depth than the other ones uh that you have but uh all the same still the overgourd and uh we got scarn in there on that so um those those are brand new i'll be having some coming to you soon jay so great. for giveaways great and uh and yeah the color looks great on those yeah thank you yeah I got, pat draws did the coloring on this yeah. oh dude i forgot oh, to tell you though but scarn scarn kind of got killed last adventure I'm, no, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I just want to see his reaction. No. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, <laughs> I've, uh, you know, obviously this week I'm going to be excited to be working on that witch's hut for Jeremy and Good. then um, uh, just uh, trying to finish up the other, the, the, the board game that I've been painting and uh, just uh, streaming like a mofo, you know, <laughs> Uh, tell me, dude. We we all uh, understand that. I mean, it's like uh, you know, it's a second job. So, yeah, Mike, uh, make sure you link your Etsy. Yeah, please do, Mike. Please do link that. Hey, Jay, I'm gonna have to bounce here in a minute. It's okay, Jer hey, Jeremy. So, thanks so very much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna do a couple. Uh, we'll do Bill shout outs and then we'll do giveaways. So, really appreciate you hopping okay. on and uh, thank you for your continued partnership. No, uh, thanks for uh, putting up with my uh, dour personality. Oh uh, no, and, it, uh, it's it's charming, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're uh, one man. You're a one man company, and the stuff you put out is amazing. For you know, just every it, and it, it's great because we can get you and we can talk to you whenever we need to. It's wonderful. It just yeah. it, it, it works really well. So uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, it was good hanging out with everyone. You Thank guys you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. You it's, it was good time. meeting you, Jeremy. Definitely good yeah. meeting you. See ya. All right, so uh, yeah. Bill, what Bill, what is up in your world? Oh well, I got a pirate ship to paint, <laughs> <laughs> and and lots of pirates. I'm printing more pirates, uh, and I got uh, two of Christine's to finish up. But the pirate ship is the next big thing. It's it's big. It's a lot of brushing. So. Base, base coats are done now. It's detail work and, and a lot of dry brushing. So that's that's it for me. Well, that was easy. Oh, uh, Kyle wanted to remind you that uh, there's a discount code on our MMF for your listeners. Um, Great. For 40% for 40 off all the stuff in our store. Um, and the code is just Lord Gasumba. All, all one word smashed together? All one word. No, like, caps or anything like that. Just super right. simple. Kyle, can you link that in chat, too, uh, with the with the link to the store and the and the code? That would be awesome. Uh, thank you. That's great. You know what? That's great, because i got to order those Stone Guardians. <laughs> very cool. Very, very yeah, cool. Really appreciate that, Christine. Thank you so very much for everyone okay. in the community. Um, that is That is wonderful. So, uh, all right. What is going on in my neck of the woods or our neck of the woods here for this week? So, um, <laughs> I just ordered something. That's funny. So, um, so, uh, I don't know where it is. 
I have a book here somewhere. I can't find it. All right. uh, it's probably up on the shelf. Has everyone see, uh, heard about the book Slaying the Dragon? Oh, wrong one. Slaying the Dragon by Ben Riggs. All right. Well, Ben Riggs is going to be here to talk about his book on on Wednesday night. So it's about the fall of TSR. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna discuss it with him, uh, with uh, Anna Meyer and uh, um, Casey Brown will be here instead instead of Mike. Mike is off on Wednesday this Wednesday. So we will we will uh, we'll discuss that on Wednesday night. I have a game on Thursday night. I haven't finalized that yet. So I think it's gonna be the Norwell Headhunters. So I don't have a banner for that. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to, uh, go, this is more than likely, unless I have a special guest, which it's a possibility. We're going to continue with our wall of fame deep dive. We're going to talk about Ravenloft. Ooh. Okay. Strahd and house one and two. So that'll be uh, this time next week. We'll do a wall of fame deep dive on the Ravenlofts. If we don't have a special guest. Okay. Yep. Okay. Very cool. But the day before this. Saturday night is a big Saturday night special. Ed Greenwood, the voice actor, Mark Muir, Tony Winslow Brill, Eric Boyd, Anna Meyer, Eric Menke, the return of two drink minimum and the adventure depths of terror. I guarantee you they will be scared and terrified on this one. So that'll mm. be, that'll be Saturday night, 6 PM Eastern time. Okay. Look for that. Uh, and that'll, there'll be four streams coming up this week. So we got Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday for the next week. All right. Um, I talked about a game I'm going to play in. Did anyone watch the Fantasy Mapping Show Saturday night? Right? We had a very, very special guest uh, from Chaosium on. And he was kind enough to offer to DM a Call of Cthulhu game for us. So, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and I am, I played Call of Cthulhu at Gary Khan as, um, and, and, and that, that is Matt Ryan of Chaosium, by the way. I played a Call of Cthulhu game uh, with uh, um, Alyssa Faden. So myself, Alyssa Faden, Anna Meyer, and the owner uh, of uh, Frog God, Zach Glazer, will be playing uh, in this Call of Cthulhu game, mark it down. I don't have a banner yet. Friday, August 26th. Well, thanks, man. Friday, August 26th will be that game. All right, will be that Call of Cthulhu game and a run from 7 to 10 p.m. EDT that night. I don't know, Cathay, because I don't know. I, I'm not smart enough to tell you what edition. So, um, yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be that night. So, uh, yeah, the four of us will be uh, will be dying in a Call of Cthulhu game, so we'll have a, a <laughs> Friday night special there. So, uh, yeah, and that's what's up. And, I, and August is going to be packed, just like uh, July has been. So please note, I'll have a lot of uh, yep, all yep, Bill, all all vids are on Twitch for ninety days, and then uh, I think it's ninety, not thirty, ninety days uh, on Twitch because we're a partner now. And uh, and also YouTube channel. The regular uh, thirty. So it's Balfrin's asked when's our next BattleTech MechWarrior game. I gotta fit that in the schedule somewhere. Uh, we also need to do a kids game. Uh, my son wants to play uh, D, D. We don't stream that one though, so that may uh, that may trump our BattleTech MechWarrior game because uh, my son's really asking for a D and D game. Balfrin, but we'll try and fit it all in. All right, so we're gonna do the giveaways. Last call. You have the Scriptorium. The entire scriptorium from, once again, Jay, you can hit my wrong button there. In its entirety, uh, the, uh, from, oh, God, Jay, you shouldn't have closed it out. I am a dumbass. Wrong button. In STL, you'll get half of it this month, and when it comes out next month, I'll send you the other half if you have a 3D printer. That whole thing will be yours, okay? You can also just go on those tribes and get it, too. I have two Reaper Minis. Uh, well, actually, seven. Goblin Warriors. Okay. And because uh, uh, of, uh, of Darling, Tianalise the Bog Witch. Okay. Those two go together. And then the third giveaway, Mike Disney Print. Okay. All right. Very cool. Let's do these up. And then we're going to raid into uh, raid into Darling and we'll call it an evening. Sound good? Sounds good. I hope you all had. I hope you all enjoyed this. 
stream. I really enjoyed uh, I really enjoyed putting this together, and I really appreciate everyone's input here who was on, all five of you. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, discussion tonight. Um, so here we go. Let's let's uh, let's get this uh, let's get this giveaway going here. I'm really, thank you, Jay. Jay, you you yeah. you're really the man that brings it all together. And my uh, pleasure having us on the show and and getting us to talk about what we are passionate about and uh, getting to interact with the chat and, and with each other and you in the community is it, just gotcha. it's it's awesome. So thank you, Jay. Well, we got to do this more than once every year or something. I think we need to do this a little bit more and you know, have a, a, the base, I say, the four of you, counting Jeremy, and then we can add in other guests, too, because, uh, you know, and uh, uh, rotate them in on this. I think it would be a really nice, uh, a nice touch for the community just to see what's going on. But I know we're talking probably, uh, GreeperCon is going to take up a lot of your time, and we got all, we, I have virtual GreeperCon coming up. Uh, Mike, I gotta get a, I gotta get your time slot in too for you when you're going to, uh, when you're opening going. the stuff up like I do always. Yeah, man. Well, uh, we have we, two years. Well, I have Phoenix Iwaki who's in Japan starting at six o'clock in the morning, so you don't need to get up that early this time. Oh, okay. Yeah, like ten o'clock. I mean, that's good night. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's good for you, man. You know how because he's start he's starting at six central. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really good we got a, we got an overseas streamer who's going to start the con off and then you can go you're going to go he's going to raid right into you so that's yeah, that'd be perfect we, we'll set that awesome. up yeah awesome. all right um here we go closing this out closing out the giveaways i know i'm babbling here i apologize everyone the winner. You need to tell me what you want, okay? And and if you have a 3D printer, I ask you take this. You take the scriptorium, you know, uh, and let the people who don't have the 3D printers take the other stuff, please, okay? Um, because uh, once once those two are gone, uh, then we'll just go, you know. So uh, Rob, Rob Phantom Scriptorium. There you go, Rob. Nice. Phantom NJ. Awesome. Grats. Grats, man. Very, very cool. All right, so we got that one done. Next winner. Cardman, 2467. Grats, Cardman. I, I know I have you uh, have your address here. Let me make sure you are on. You are still on to claim. Uh, you get the minis from Reaper. Last one, the Mike Disney Prince, which is awesome. Whoa, shit. So uh, guess what, everyone? I hit the wrong button. I hit complete. Hit exclamation point drawing in one second. Everyone, <sighs> go go for it. Exclamation drawing, everyone. I hit the. I completed it uh, by accident because I'm a dumbass. Hit exclamation drawing if you want the Mike Disney print, please. I'll wait thirty seconds or a minute. I am so sorry. Dang, you've been wrong button. Uh, wrong well, way. you know, it's just one of those things, man. And I'm not even drunk. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be the night if there wasn't. Yeah, it wouldn't be the box. night. So this will get anyone who's on will get a shot of the Mike Disney print who hasn't won something tonight. So that's a really actually a good thing that we're doing. Yeah, nothing new, Lomas says. Oh, my God. <laughs> and please sit tight. We're going to raid into Darling with over 100 people. Remember, follow everyone who's been on this stream. I, Jeremy's the only one that doesn't have it. Have. Bill's got an Instagram. Right, go to Bill's Instagram so you can see what he's up to. Uh, Moonlight Minis, uh, please go there. Go to Mike Disney's channel. Uh, Wait, do I have you on Instagram? I need you on Instagram, Bill. Do I have you? <laughs> Sashar Scorn. Yeah, Sashar. Yeah, I think you do. Oh, yeah. Okay, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. All right, here yeah, we go. I didn't get the name fixed, so. <laughs> Closing this out, the winner of the Mike Disney print. 170. Grats. Awesome. Is he on? Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone there just uh, signed in, so they have to be. Yep, has to be on. One hundred seventy. Grats. If I don't, if you don't think I have your name and address, please just. If I may have it, but just put it into Whisper. I'll get these out Monday. The Reaper minis and and the uh, and and the Mike Disney print. And Rob, I'll give you. I'll set up a Dropbox for the uh, for the um, half the half of the scriptorium that's out now. Thanks, Amy. Hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you so very much, um, Christine and uh, Mike and Bill and Jeremy and Darling and uh, what a one. Thanks, I, I appreciate it. Uh, we'll keep. Uh, we got it. We got. Like I said, it's nice to get off of me just blathering about uh, uh, D and D modules or whatever and change it up and really go to, you know, 
the art artist side of, of the community and which we really I really think we need to you know engage more again I think it's a great way to go so all right thank well, you thank you Jay and thank you chat for being so awesome tonight yep well, yeah, have a great night all right let's rate in a drawing of over a hundred all right yep let's rate let's let's kick this oh, let's kick. ears light up I know aren't they so cute uh, oh they are cool <laughs> <laughs> Christine, you're going to have a table set up at ReaperCon this year? Um, so I will be in Artist Alley at the at the artist tables, but Kyle will have our vendor booth set up. Um, selling 104, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See you Bye. Wednesday night. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Wow. That was awesome, everyone. That was awesome. Super cool. Yeah. It flew.